Welcome to CNET's live coverage of Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference. What can you expect from the show? Updates to iOS, Mac OS, and more. I'm Maya Zaktar alongside Claire Riley, welcome, and Jeff Bacalar. How are you guys doing? Hello. Pretty psyched. Let's give you a rundown of today's plan. We're in our New York studio later. We'll be checking in with Scott Stein, who is at the event. We'll be commenting throughout the event because Apple will not let us show you their stream. Thumbs the brakes. If you guys have any questions or comments about what's coming up from Apple, let us know. Tweet us with the hashtag CNETLive. All right, guys, this is Apple's developers conference, so it's usually about the software. There are rumors kicking around about iOS 13, uh, iOS apps coming up, Mac OS, Mac OS kind of killing off iTunes potentially, maybe even some hardware. Claire, what are you excited about? Um, uh, there's so much happening today. I feel like the really small things are the things that I nerd out over. And one of the big ones that's a really small thing is mouse support and support for a cursor on the iPad. I feel like the iPad's this amazing, beautiful tablet. And yet, if you want to be a pro user and you want to really like get into the nitty gritty, then you're just kind of swiping at it with your monkey hands. I feel like the mouse is going to really unlock the potential of the iPad. And if we can get that, then that's what I'm up for. You're, um, you're setting expectations very low. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I like it, I like it a lot. It sounds like you just want an iPad to be a laptop. Look, I, if I said, let make me, me an iPad that's a laptop. Something. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god. iPad with a mouse. Guys, I'm out. This whole live show, I don't need to be here. This is what I need. Um, <laughs> look, I think it also kind of opens up to the idea of marzipan, which yeah. is really cool. That's the idea that we could get iOS apps on Mac OS and vice versa. So you use an iPhone app on your laptop and vice versa. So if we see that kind of cursor support and mouse support, it could be a sign that the kinds of apps that you get on here might be coming to your iPad and to your iPhone, which is really cool. They've got this whole ecosystem. Why not take advantage of it? Yeah, cursor support makes a lot of sense because if those apps are coming also to Mac OS, you shouldn't be touching them, right? Because there's no touchscreen Macs yet. Because this I mean, is the Gorilla Arm. Remember that? That's how you described it? The Gorilla Arm. That's exactly what they go. Nobody wants to do this. It's called Gorilla Arm. And it's like, really? I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, but maybe we'll see that. That sounds like... The Gorilla Arm or the touchscreen laptop? The touchscreen. Everything. Everything. All of it is a thing. I'm excited for all of it. How about you, Jeff? I would love to see iTunes get murdered. That'd be amazing. Uh, I also, you know, they've really uh, pitched this event with their packaging and their marketing and all of their, you know, graphic sort of stuff is this like creative explosion. And I really want to see what that means for, you know, there's a lot of uh, criticism that Apple has abandoned their sort of creative audience. I mean, let's be honest, everyone who edits video now ditched their Mac a while ago. Uh, so I am curious to see what kind of effort they're going to make to bring back some of those creative people to come mm -hmm. back to the platform. I think that's what they're going for with the robot exploding. I mean, graphic. who can really know? That was a very, there was a lot Vague. to be unpacked, and yeah. I felt like I was reading runes, you know, when I was trying to totally. pull out all of the little graphics in there. We, I mean, Cena did a fantastic story on what all of those invite graphics meant, and I was impressed that we dug so deep. Yeah, yeah. no, that's the only kind of reporting you're going to get from us. <laughs> I mean, top standard. I've got those graphics on my screen if you want to take that. You know, I'm thinking this probably means colored pencils. That's what's going to happen. Instead of it just being the regular Apple Pencil, you're going to have like multiple colors. Go on. Oh. Yes, like maybe a pink one. Okay. And a red one. And this one could be skull shaped. Ooh. I'm down. Skull shaped pencil. What about an alien pencil? That's that's crazy. Cool. I mean, that's that's just possibly, too much. Yeah, it's too much. So you got to save something for next year. I mean, I also thought it's it's kind of when I look at these things, I just think. Are they trying to play on what's hot right now? Everyone loves the neons. Everyone loves mm. unicorns. So maybe they're just going, hey, we're cool, we're hip. It's very hot right now. Yeah, we know what the youth of today like, and they like unicorns with neon colors. Let's bring it to them. Well, for me, I'm, I'm excited about something that's not been announced. It's never going to happen. I'm not getting my hopes up. An actual new Mac Pro. No. Apple did say they're coming out with one. They're gonna, they, they've designed themselves into a thermal corner, I believe was their yeah. issue with the trash can one that was introduced in 2013. When they introduced it, it was pretty hilarious because I think it's Phil Schiller who went on stage saying how innovative it was. Do we have that clip? Is there a clip of the garbage can? <laughs> of the trash compactor? I mean, it's an interesting design. It's kind of cool. I think when it came out, it was unlike anything we'd seen in the sort of the PC space. Sure. Mm -hmm. For all the people that are building their own PCs, this was... Not that. <laughs> yeah, it sure wasn't. Where do I rip out the graphics card and put in a new one? No, it's too sleek for that. You don't touch it. You don't destroy it. Well, that's what people loved about it was just simply how upgradable it was. 
right? Yes, in, that, in the sense that you couldn't in at all. Unless you couldn't. Unless you, extend, you had the uh, Thunderbolt port for that. So you, essentially, you could have it really powerful if you had like a spare tower attached to it via Thunderbolt cable. What if the computer was the tower? You know, the way computers work. <laughs> so, well, it's kind of like you want a cursor, I want a computer. <laughs> right. Just the simple things. Yeah. That's, and isn't Apple great at doing that, about giving you things you didn't realize they didn't already do but should have done? It's like when, you know, you've got these beautiful MacBooks and then you have to, you've got just a couple of ports down the side. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm at work, I've got this massive, like, dock attached to it, mm -hmm. dongles just. Yeah, that's convenient. Like, it's just an octopus of peripherals and sure. you know why you can release the release the individual like sleek device but then just leave it to everyone else to make it look you know really terrible with all the attachments so maybe that's what they're going for just we give you the beautiful mac pro you attach all the nasty stuff mm -hmm. to it we don't want to know about that it's just beautiful <laughs> that's and your simple. problem yeah. that's your mess okay so apple did say we were going to get a mac pro no earlier than 2019 this mm. seems like the best time to do it because september is usually the iPhone and there's who knows what else. But yeah, we're talking do we about... have an event in October after the iPhone launch. So was... I want to say there is. Yeah, so uh, maybe they'll just kind of one more thing, the Mac Pro in September, but I'm kind of hopeful. We don't normally see hardware at WWDC. It's all about developers, so it's all about software and it's all about, you know, all the stuff you're going to be able to do behind the scenes. I mean, would would we see hardware? Did we see? We didn't see new hardware last right. year. Right. No. I mean, it, they my, don't usually do that. My notes: 2017, we got the HomePod. We got the iPad, iMac Pro announced in 2017. And it came out later that year. So they did announce hardware. Oh, so it is possible. There was a new iPad Pro that also announced during la uh, 2017. Then you got to go all the way back to 2013 when the trash can shows up, Airport <laughs> uh, Time Capsule, Airport Extreme MacBook Air get a refresh back then. So it's not every year. It's it's obviously it's a software based thing. But if you have to develop apps or you want to be creative, maybe you want a powerful machine that's not an all-in-one. Maybe it's not an I iMac Pro. It's a true Mac I Pro. I feel like now I'm kind of confident that that's going to happen. I don't know. I just feel that's like... It's a big call from you, Jeff. Yeah, right? Just do it. You're going to put your big... money on the table for that? Sure. All of it. All right. Five dollar dues F and it's on. <laughs> and it's on. I <laughs> yeah. don't know. I just feel like it makes sense. They're, they're definitely leaning into that creative kind of angle thing that they were, uh, that we were making fun of a minute ago. But... You know, they need to anchor that sort of motive against a thing. Mm. And that thing is probably a Mac Pro. So it's definitely going to be here. Well, the other thing that got me is I was just chatting to a friend the other day who's a video editor, and I said, how many people do you know that use this Mac Pro? And mm. they were like, he said, well, it's really expensive. So if you're into really building up your own PC or your own computer, would you go with a Mac or would you get something that allows a lot more customize, mm. customization? Um, and that... It hasn't been updated. It feels like the Mac Pro users, they've sort of acknowledged a little bit Apple that they kind of left them out in the cold oh, a bit because sure. there hasn't been much of an update cycle for mm -hmm. this beautiful device. So you kind of released it onto the iceberg and just kind of sent it away and all these creatives are like, well, what do we do with it now? Then they also gutted Final Cut, which I used to use Final Cut. And I was taught in an Apple store how to, how to edit video. When I wanted to get in a video, I'm like, I'll just go to the store. It was free. Learn Final Cut. <laughs> I don't need to go to college. I'll just ask that guy. <laughs> well, that guy taught me everything. Yeah. <laughs> they actually had their classes there. So okay, yeah. it wasn't like some random. <laughs> it just I can stranger. tell you about the iPhone, sir, but I can't teach you about editing software. <laughs> but they taught people how to use their software, and then they totally threw it out, replaced it with Ooh. that uh, Final Cut 10. So yeah. Premiere really became interesting. So then you're like, well, Premiere's on both. I don't even need to use a Mac anymore. Right. So a lot of people switched from, from Macs to PCs. I mean, that's what happened here. Yeah. In our office, mm. that's what happened. Yeah. So. so let's talk Mars panel a little bit more because I'm, okay. I'm actually intrigued by this because if we are getting apps moving from one to the other, do you think that because of, what's the word, Apple's distaste for Intel at times, do you think that we'll get an ARM-based MacBook, something that can run iOS apps natively or maybe even macOS? I mean, I, I think the whole thing about this is that what, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I think it's too early to call for me because I, for me, Project Marzipan is this been, has been this like secret project. Mm -hmm. Whether we get 
all the hardware to back that up. It feels like we're still in the kind of pipe dream phase of marzipan and that it's still exciting, but we don't know exactly what it's going to involve. And it's not necessarily something that's going to be totally consumer facing at first. So whether it's just something to say to devs, all right, we'll let you tweak a bit behind the scenes so that maybe this app can be ported over, but it's not necessarily something that the consumers will have a total like dig their teeth into straight away. So I'm not sure. I, I, it's, it's probably too early for me to call. I feel like they'll, they will, it won't be called Marzipan, right? They're gonna, they'll like hitch it on something and, it's, and it's reveal it as a feature. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, th that'll, I think that'll be an indicator that they're, that they're, you know, ready to kind of roll that out if they kind of like hitch it alongside some sort of product or uh, um, application or some sort of like service where it's like, oh, this is this mm. sort of multi-platform thing, mm. so, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, how many apps are we going to see in the early stages? We've sort of, we've heard, like, I, I kind of think that in terms of the App Store, there's a lot to be said for the iPhone App Store. It's really, really popular. There's a lot of people that say that maybe the Mac App Store, you know, is, is there much going on? I, I kind of saw something online. The word tumbleweeds was used. It's a strong phrase, but maybe this is a way of getting that halo effect of the popularity of iPhone mm -hmm. apps and, you know, however many millions of downloads they get every year mm -hmm. um, and and get that to kind of cross over into a bit of the Mac world when it comes to apps. Um, but I saw a great um, a great quote this week and it was um, Gus Muller who developed the Acorn photo editing software and he said that history is filled with cross-platform UIs and write once, run anywhere dreams. Mm -hmm. None of them turned out insanely great. So I think there's a lot of excitement about this, but I don't think we're going to see a fully-fledged you know, jump over across the line, you know, I'm just getting the lemon tree Simpsons yeah. episode in my head. I don't know how quickly that's going to come to fruition. I think it's more uh, quality of life stuff than actual, like, serious functionality. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that's the one thing I think Apple kind of does kind of ingeniously with uh, rolling things out uh, slowly but surely. Uh, you know, they do a lot of smart, you know, um, Quality of life stuff where it's like, oh, I didn't know I could, I, now I can text people on my computer. Mm. Stuff like that maybe isn't so hitting you over the head. Yeah. But, you know, once you have it, you're sort of like, well, how did I live without it? Well, it's like the whole, a lot of w what we see with iOS, right? We see these improvements that are just little kind of changes and you just go, huh, that's nifty. You know, one of the things, uh, the changes that they're talking about coming with iOS 13 is the idea of bringing WhatsApp style profiles to your mm. messaging. So maybe you'll get a profile picture next to it and just little things like that or the ability to undo when you're typing text. I think Imagine those are, that. oh gee, you can't undo like terrible life decisions, but you can undo, maybe just think about what you're gonna tweet before you do it. <laughs> maybe they're just sort of thinking, guys, you don't have to send it straight away. Just back it up a Here's bit. Here's your second chance. Yeah, yeah, you've got a chance here. Just don't do it straight There's away. There's supposed to be some kind of like magical gesture you can use in iOS 13 to do the undo you're talking about because right now undo typing is shaking the phone, which oh. I remembered like when I had an iPhone, I would, I would do this by accident. Really? It was like undo typing. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I just, that was just a rough spot on the train. Like that's now all that was. Now you just have to put your hand over your uh, agape mouth and that will be the way. Because it's, it's watching my face. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> iOS 13, the big thing everyone seems to be excited about, dark mode. Okay. I'm not, I know this sounds like all a joke, but people are really excited about the idea of seeing a dark mode on iOS. What do you guys think about the excitement about I, that? I think what's cool about dark mode is that the, it, it can basically extend your battery. And that, to me, is the only thing that matters. Like, if you're someone who gets real excited about the aesthetics of your operating system, cool, mm. that's great. But you know what? Putting on dark mode will uh, lessen the load for the screen on your phone and uh, directly lead to better battery life. Mm. So be excited for that. So that's a cool thing. The other yeah. thing is uh, iPhones moved to OLED with iPhone 10, So it wouldn't be a huge deal back in the LCD days. So. It does make more sense for... Totally. I guess, I've, obviously the iPhone XR is still LCD, but yeah. for the other two or three, whatever the heck, XR. Who knows? Sorry, XR, XS, whatever they're called at this right. point. But yeah, they can take advantage of that it. That will same matter. Thing, same thing with the, with the watch OS. Like yeah. they've moved to OLED, or they have been OLED. There's a rumor of a dedicated app store for the watch. Sure. Which I think would be odd at first, but I think people will get used to it. What do you think about that? Well, I think there's 
when you when you obviously there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens when you're sinking and that makes sense for such a small device at a small screen but I like the idea that if you could be out on the go and just suddenly go oh wait I want to I want to download this app or I want to you know being able to actually live off your wrist rather than constantly being tethered because that's what they've tried to do to mm -hmm. make it more of a standalone device and you can say I don't need to, I don't need to be tied to my phone man right. I'm 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 free and I'm <laughs> living I'm living large I think one of the things that I'm quite excited about is um, there's cool new apps. So there was talk of a, a dose app, which is a, a reminders to when to take your medication. That's, That's a really nifty thing to have on your wrist. Mm -hmm. um, there's also talk of a cycle for period tracking, which I know for like, a lot of health tech, they kind of ignore that whole part mm -hmm. of the market. So that could be really cool. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that you want on your wrist. Just quick, easy, oh, yep, need to take my tablets. That makes a lot of sense. So those kinds of things, if you suddenly want to download on the go, it's making it less tied to your iPhone and less forcing you to kind of have the two always together. And watch does have LTE at this point, so you can have it by itself almost. So. Oh, and the other thing about the watch, I really, really want the... Um, the voice memos app capability. So you can just be like, note to self. Um, Talking to my watch in public <laughs> and it's, it's working. Uh, don't I look cool, note to self. Uh, yeah, Do this I, more often. <laughs> yeah, literally could not think of any note to self ad lib. But I think I think that's a really cool idea. I don't know whether it's just I'm a massive nerd and I just want to make myself memos you do all that? the time. Uh, maybe, okay, maybe as a journo, You'd be okay. like, well, let's just have a quick interview right now because I'm here on the floor with Tim Cook and I just want to get a couple of quotes from you, <laughs> Mr. Tim. Cook, speaking to my ribs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yes, I did have ribs today. No, how did you know? Okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah, so that's something cool. But it's, it's those little nifty small things, I think, that'll be fun. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely due for an overhaul. So I think a new watch OS is something we can all look forward to. Uh, speaking of looking forward to... We've got Scott Stein over at the event. He seems like he's going to be very excited to talk Apple things because either he's asleep or this image is weird. So Scott Stein, are you there? Can you hear me? Wake the up! Great beyond. No, we lost We've lost Scott. Oh, I do love... We lost his signal. He's, he's, Scott's fine. We, we assume he's fine. <laughs> just the signal. We'll, we'll get back to Scott in a minute. Claire, I, do, I just do love conference Wi-Fi. You know, it's like we've got the biggest tech company in yeah. the world. You got some Wi-Fi sorted in this room? No, everyone's just holding their phones up. It's it's classic case. It's the Middle Ages yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. It's like one of those really old uh, keynotes where Steve Jobs asked people to turn off their hotspots because. Did like, you really? Yeah. It was. It was. This is a long time. It was yeah. like the 3G days. So, so this is. You know, yeah. There was only so much of that. That's so much bandwidth out there. Uh, there's also supposed to be a new health app, like we were talking about. I'm looking at the this iOS rumor roundup. Screen time. Which... Can I talk about the dark mode for a second? One, one thing I was no. kind of excited. No? Oh. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I initially took this as a gritty reboot for, for your phone screen, but I like the idea of the battery. Also, for me, um, switching off at nighttime. So when it's, I've got, you know, health controls. Health controls? Sure. Yeah. Um, on my phone that tell me my phone changes to grayscale at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. and says it's time to go to bed because I will literally sit there swiping through Instagram until the end of time and the heat death of the universe. <laughs> um, but with this, if you could switch to a dark mode at night time maybe and that goes into your kind of some of the screen time controls that we saw last year at last year's WWDC, maybe we're moving into a more kind of cohesive system where it's like, just calm your farm when it comes to screen use and that could be kind of tying in with a bedtime sleep controls. I don't know. I feel like there's something that could happen there. It'd be really nice if it would actually communicate with the watch so you can determine how your health is working. And it says, oh, by the way, maybe you should go to that grayscale a little earlier than you yeah. used to because there seems to be all this data between these two devices. It seems like they don't talk to each other enough. Right? And it's sleep tracking. I mean, it used to all be about steps in the past, mm -hmm. but it feels like wearables are absolutely that coherent, full picture of your health and sleep is so much a part of that. And so, I don't know, I remember when I got a really, really early jawbone back in the in the day that sort of was able to measure how I slept based on my movements at yeah. night. That's a really exciting part of wearable technology. And so I think bringing out more of that sleep tracking and then having it tie with your phone and having that whole ecosystem. Once again, Apple's got all the hardware there. You know, maybe it'll work out what time you switch off your, your Mac at night and then when you stop being on Instagram on your phone and then it'll measure your sleep with your wearable and then you'll get some sort of implantable. But I think that's WWDC 20, I think. 
That's next knows. year? Yeah, yeah. So you've got to have something big for next year. So. Oh, absolutely. Surgery is, so, yeah. is for next year. I asked uh, people on Twitter, like, what did they want to see out of WWDC today? And so lots of people responded. One of them was splitting iTunes into separate programs. Mm. That has been rumored. We've seen there's supposed to be a music app. There's supposed to be a podcast app, a TV app, as we've already seen, and the other one, video app, I guess. Like, there's, this seems like this is a long time coming because iTunes is a bloated mess. It used to be like music, right? Just music. And then it's like, oh, there's podcasts. And now there's video. And now there's this and that and yeah. the other thing. They kept shoehorning a lot of stuff Yeah, and it's become like this gigantic program. And it's really, I think it's time. When was the last time you used iTunes? Uh, when I accidentally plugged in a phone to okay. my device. And it's like, oh, iTunes. You want iTunes? I'm like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I got some sweet iTunes. <laughs> iTunes? Right? It's like, did you hit the play button? iTunes? It's like, no, no, no. I didn't try. I wanted to pause it in Chrome. I didn't want you to come up iTunes. It's oh, like, poor iTunes. But I got books, iTunes. I got podcasts, it's all of it. <laughs> but I don't, I don't need it. I feel yeah. bad for iTunes, though. I you know I said I want to watch it getting murdered. I want to kill it up. But, like, you know, iTunes has been around for, like, 20 years or something, and it's just this old sort of, you know, pro you could, like, rely on. But then he got, like, kind of out of shape and put on a lot of weight, and mm -hmm. every time you ran him... You just cried it could have a been a contender, though, <laughs> to know, just really mix up sport he's the metaphors. Marlon Brandos yeah. of uh, music applications. But it makes sense, right? So, I mean, it's funny because we've heard all of this talk in the political sphere this year about um, let's split up. Uh, split tech. up the big tech companies. Yeah. And so when I saw splitting up iTunes, I was like, great, separate companies. You know, Elizabeth Warren's going to be so happy. And then I realized what they were talking about. <laughs> um, but I think it makes sense. You know, the podcast app on Apple is just massive. It's as you, can, you can't really think about that being part of iTunes as well as things like music, TV. Obviously, we had that big splashy launch for TV, so mm -hmm. they're, they're making a lot of moves in that space. And, um, and talk of spinning off into a books app, so things like audiobooks. Obviously, um, Audible is a really big player there, so maybe they could be making more of a play into that. So it makes sense that you have all of these little separate things. But, I mean, the talk is that will they kill off iTunes altogether? Probably not because if you still want to connect your phone to your, to your mm. Mac, doing it with a cable, then... I just remember the old days where like on the iPhone there was an iPod button. Right. That was it. It was an app and then they split it up into videos and music and it was like, wait, what? why'd you do that? I like yeah. this one app. I knew where stuff was. But now this seems like this is just a gradual admission at some point. Be like, okay guys, we know this is... There's 15 apps in this one app. You should really break it out a little bit. Mm. Also, it seems like It'd be like lots more features for Mac OS, right? It'd be like, oh, we have a new podcast app and we have this and it's mm -hmm. dedicated. Is uh, it a way of making it look like you've done a whole bunch of stuff, but you've already got the kind of architecture there behind the scenes? Or, look at all these new apps we're throwing in. It's like, we had, we well, had I mean, if they're, if they are using or if they're importing their own things, that's how Apple did uh, news and stocks. And it looks like we've got Vanessa actually at the scene. Scott Stein is missing. Vanessa Handoriana, host of Apple Core. Can you tell us what it's like over there? I can't hear you very well, so I'm just going to start on going off on a rant because I can't hear you on your end. As okay. you can see, I am literally glowing. There's some interesting lighting going on over here at WWDC. We are behind me is the stage, and there's a lot of emoji explosions going on behind the stage. So I hope that's not a precursor to what we can expect from today's show. So there you have it. There's a bunch of emojis on the stage their heads are exploding my head is exploding there's a lot of people a lot of energy over here i'm not sure you can, if you can hear me very well but it's loud really loud in here loud music uh there's people cheering a lot of developers cheering i'm going down the halls right now uh so that's why the lighting's changing but it seems like everybody's excited about what they're going to announce today in terms of software development i'm probably mostly excited for dark mode in iOS, which is rumored to be finally coming. I'm also excited to see what they have for watchOS 6. This is supposed to be a really, really big update to uh, the watchOS. So those are my picks. Uh, again, I can't hear you at all, so I'm so sorry. I don't know what you guys picked in terms of your favorites, but it looks like this might be starting in about 10 minutes. No, um, no signs of starting quite yet. So. We're, like I said, just hearing people cheer, hearing some music, and watching this explosion of animojis. So, I mean, obviously we're gonna hear something about animojis, but hopefully that's not center stage here at WWDC 2019. In terms of other years, I would say it seems more crowded. 
a little bit more exciting. Just maybe it's because they're forcing people to cheer. Oh, okay. They're telling me I need to sit down. So I'm going <laughs> to go now. I'm going to go find my seat, but I will catch you guys after this whole thing. Hopefully uh, not two and a half hours and <laughs> yeah, keep it, keep it short, but that's probably not going to happen. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Well, thanks, Vanessa. You basically interviewed yourself, which was fantastic. Yeah, did all wow. the work. All thanks the work. So all the work. A what a pro. That's, that's uh, <laughs> that is very blue room. Man, I hope they don't really lean into Animoji stuff. That's... You kind of secretly want it, though. You no, wanna, I don't. You want I a think... whole topper show that's just unicorn-themed and uh, all these, look, like, inflatable Apple, unicorns coming onto the stage. Apple changed the world when it came to music, to creativity, to self-creative empowerment. Animojis really, for me, has just been a downer. Okay, like, so wait a second. So with the camera on a phone, there's complex AR tracking of yeah. your face. So while they do use it for something really, really, what appears to be silly, maybe this is a hint about augmented reality, mm. honestly, because they do have an AR kit. Okay. They've been working on this since we've seen a lot of these applications last year. We've seen the iPad Pro essentially being used as a window through AR. And obviously the iPhone is very powerful to be able to do that as well. So maybe... They can't just be like, yeah, we're going to show you a computer. Or we're going to show you software developers kits, which are very exciting and animated. You know, these <laughs> SDKs are awesome to look at. So maybe that's actually a little wink. Because they, they usually like giving us a little hint. Sure. Yeah, but maybe it's a sign of the times that we have the most complicated and beautiful technologies at our fingertips and we're going to use them to make monkey faces. Well, that's super important. But it's also what the people want, you know? Like, we're all monsters. We don't need fantastic technology that unlocks the future in the palm of our hand. Often we just want it to make things be easier and to send funny pictures to our family when we're overseas. Which gets you to use iMessage, I, I which means you, stuck, mm -hmm. you stay with Apple. Unless you get those actually baked in movies from your friends, you're like, oh, I can't see it as well as everybody <laughs> else. Why is the quality so grainy and crappy? It's like, oh, because I have an Android and I can't see your beautiful iMessage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your beautiful um, emojis. But yeah, I, th I think there, I mean, there's always been, there was this report from uh, CNET Shark Tipkin. Tipkin? I will mm -hmm. say your name wrong, so sorry, Shar. Uh, but talking about how Apple's working on, on augmented reality glasses. Mm. And I don't know if they have the tech to make it this year. It seems mm. like that would be a 2020 kind of thing. Mm. Like, let's go big with this. Yeah. But by slowly big bringing in developers to have apps for iPhone and iPad that bring in all this augmented reality stuff and the fact that people are used to using it, that's mm. the other thing. It's no, it makes no sense if you have the best technology that nobody uses. Yeah. I mean, honestly, Windows Phone had some really cool stuff in it. Palm uh, WebOS had some great stuff in it. People stole from it liberally because they died off. Mm. So maybe this is their way to slowly go, hey guys, we're gonna teach you how to use this. Yeah. Get, don't get weirded out by the fact that we can track your face this well. If anybody else did this, by the way, and we're like, but you can see my face and you've made me a cartoon and you can track it this well. <laughs> you've reduced me to a series of ones and zeros that can yeah. be mapped and sent around the world. Oh my gosh, what happened to my biometric privacy? <laughs> it's fine, I'm an alien now. Same thing um, with the Kinect. I mean, people were worried about the Kinect. A camera in my living room, this is right. nuts. And now, now it's like, oh, this is fine. Yeah, Listen. we've we've become a lot more accepting yeah. of the when it comes to the kind of the rub between surveillance and convenience. I feel like I am the biggest privacy narc, and even I have these connected speakers in my home. So it's like, oh, it's privacy is dead. I I don't know. I think on your AR point though, I wonder whether we'll go to something like a headset. I mean, maybe that's where we'll go deep, deep into the future. Mm -hmm. But think about it. If you're out and you've got your phone with you, would you pull out? a set of glasses, take off your reading glasses and kind of throw on a separate set of glasses when you could just say, hold up your phone. I mean, a great example that I've heard is holding up your phone in front of a, 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 sh a street of shops and finding out which shop, say, mm -hmm. okay, pull up the website, great, what's their phone number, cool, and just having that kind of scan across scan across the street. I think we'll see those kinds of AR applications with the device that's already in our pockets. So I don't know whether I see a headset straight away, but I mean, it's a good way to say that we're, we're pros on the hardware. Yeah, tried out those Bose glasses that have the speakers built into the, to the, like, the arms, actually. Right. And they look unobtrusive, they sound fantastic. So would I be able to give up my headphones for that? I'm thinking, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Not with these prescriptions right now, but like... But that'll happen. I, I mean, could see that happening with the glasses getting there. That's yeah. going to take a long time. We've mm. seen Google, Google Glass try that, and that was a big problem because... No one wants to be a glass hole. Well, was also, there was no freaking like cap on the lens. If they just put a little like door, a little flap, people would be like, they would not have worried as much. But yeah. they were like, oh, you're going to film me all the time. And now, again, everybody doesn't care that they're being filmed yeah. all the time. That was quick.
Yeah, it happened so quickly, I barely noticed. It was like two years. Yeah. And then everyone was like, there's, okay. Uh -huh. They're still in Enterprise Edition right now. Yeah. So this thing's going to start soon, it looks like. Oh, and wow. And we've got falling things. Who knows what it's going to look like. I mean, it's all those neon icons again. I feel like it's a secret message. Is this a Matrix situation? Or have you guys seen National Treasure? Because I feel like we could be finding clues right now. I have. Oh, you want to like, you want to like become some sort of like uh, cryptologist here. I know? mean, I guess, yeah. If I had the option to spend my life, you know, studying Renaissance paintings for secret clues, mm -hmm. right. maybe this is my calling. What's well, written on the back of the Constitution. Yeah. That's okay. always the answer. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a pro tip. So here's that robot's head's exploding, finally. The truth comes out. So it's interesting. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like we kind of maybe glossed over some of that AR stuff. I know that was a rumor that maybe we didn't touch on that much. But... Uh, it feels right. It feels like, you know, I think Google kind of did maybe got out ahead of this mm -hmm. a little bit with that search stuff they announced uh, a couple weeks ago. And it seems like maybe, uh, you know, the, the, the trend now is sort of heading into a world of AR that isn't incredibly inconvenient and uh, maybe a little bit more pragmatic for uh, today's use. You're pointing at a tweet. Yeah, I'm just pointing at a tweet here. Um, so we had our, our team on the ground yesterday in San Jose and um, Tim Cook, who was meeting with some students and developers, said that we think AR is the most profound technology for the next decade. The ability to overlay the virtual and the real is such a big idea. It's the next computer platform. Hashtag WWDC. And he looks really interested. He's, you know, we've got a beautiful photo there from um, CNET's James Martin, photographer on the ground at the uh, at the conference this week. Looks like they're starting some kind of uh, they're starting a keynote, but with some kind of a uh, movie being oh. shown. So like, it looks like a bunch of people uh, practicing. Developing apps, crazy enough, right? They're, people are losing sleep and now someone's stretching at a desk. And so apparently they are going hard into the developers today. Yeah. Shock and surprise. Well, that's what, it, that's what this is, right? Yeah. I mean, we kind of like lose track of that, right? We're, we're always like, what do you got for us? But it really, it's more about the potential for developers and celebrating their work. Yeah, what kits they can use and what yeah. they can make out of this. Because, I mean, it doesn't matter how great your hardware is either. <laughs> if yeah. you don't have apps... Well, it's, it's, that's it's, every platform. It's funny that this is such a big thing in the consumer space because it's it's really for the behind the scenes folks, right? It's for the people who are building the stuff that we'll eventually use. I think it's a testament to how massive Apple is as a, as a platform and a company sure. that we're all stopping everything, watching this, tuning in, bringing you our live takes on it because it's, it's massive and it affects how so many people use their devices. Uh, also, as an aside, because it is such a big event, this is also a day where frequently other companies put out like bad announcements and they want it hidden. Oh, taking Today, out the trash. It is really simple. I've seen it a lot. So keep your eye out for that. Yeah. If you see anything like, oh, Microsoft decided to like, they fired somebody. Like, yeah. Today is a, <laughs> Just swipe it under the yeah. WWDC road. Today is a there. great day. Tim Cook's coming out. He's got his trademark black on black today. And he's waving. Shocking. He's surprise. almost like a floating head. Yeah. Gotta love. If, if he didn't have those white soles on his sneakers, we wouldn't know he was there. Man, this show would be like 90 minutes shorter if they took out all the applause. <laughs> There is the lots of applause they're right excited. Now. You know. No, I know, but it's everything. Yeah. It's annoying. All right, so I'm going to try to find the live blog All right, so we're as following well. along. This is, this is like a tough one because we can't show it. We kind of have to like do live commentary We're going to do a play-by-play play play if we yeah. can as well. I'm going to try to get the live blog up too so we have images from, from the event as well. Let me get that going. And so he's basically just telling us all now that he's really inspired by developers. They are, their go. dreams and dedication and... Their dedication to fulfilling those dreams comes across in the apps that you create. Okay. You make the world a better place, and that's why we're here this morning. It's almost like he's um, speaking to a group of people ending world hunger. This is amazing. It's so <laughs> inspiring. Okay, we've got an external shot of the actual San Jose Convention Hall today, uh, where everyone was queuing and patiently waiting journos from around the world. I know some uh, journos from Australia were over there, so, you know, and the other ones back home following this at 3 a.m. Hi to you guys in Australia if you're out there. Good night. Yeah. Now, again, guys, we're going to remind you that CNET is not allowed to stream, but, you know, you could always open up two windows. So you can have this up, on, you can hear us on the left, because you know that Tim's going to be talking about some boring stuff at times. We'll let you know what's the most important stuff. I'm sure they will do their best to have their nice beautiful s slides and everything, but we'll see how this goes. Yeah, we'll, t we'll fill in the actual co uh, applause with content. Yeah. So, <laughs> so every time they're clapping, which is a lot, 
uh, we will have uh, insightful commentary. And right now we can take this, right, we're seeing the, uh, the news app on iPad, iPhone, and Mac OS. This is one of the few apps that Apple showed off last year mm. that was ported from iOS to Mac OS. Maybe that's another hint we'll see mm. more of this today because we really should see this because Mac OS's uh, app store uh, yes, yeah. that. That's the word for yeah. it. Um, yeah. our, our friends on the ground there uh, say he's talking a little bit about, I remember they announced Apple Arcade. He mm -hmm. said that's coming later this year. So and we got, a, we got a bit of a teaser image at the start there. He sort of had these three, these three circles, hardware, software, services, right. coming together into the no-gap Venn diagram of everything all together. So maybe the word hardware means that we'll get a bit of hardware today? I don't know. Perhaps. Fingers crossed. So they had a separate... So, no, that the services keynote was the Apple TV Plus keynote. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It was the Oprah thing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I remember. Was Oprah I, was there. All you need she to know is that she turned whatever, up. Yeah, she's and then there. everybody just watches her and basks in her reflected glory. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, can you blame people? Yeah. That's, uh, if I was Tim Cook, I'd definitely get Oprah up on stage. Of course. So right now Tim Cook is talking about a new show that's going to be at Apple TV Plus um, for all mankind, as far as I can tell with the title. <laughs> Don't. Well, I mean, obviously, we've got the anniversary this year what? of um, Apollo 11, so that's in July. I feel like it's just moon fever all across. Well, I don't know if you guys have got moon fever, but I'm certainly feeling my temperature rises. You're I, super obsessed with the moon, right? Yeah, um, it's pretty great. I, I don't, I, I can take it tides. or leave it. You know, we're going back a, there. You can take or leave the moon. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Take or leave the it's moon. really large compared to what other planets have. Like yeah, their moons. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would like to see some more rap for Io, you know. Oh yeah. Just if we're talking Io gets moons. Left out of, yeah. uh, of the of the satellite. Absolutely, talk. yeah. I um so I see we're seeing a trailer right now for this and yep. It's it's almost like the phrase for all mankind was some sort of hint that the this Apollo was going landing. to be about Soylent being made out of people. Wait, no, <laughs> oh, that no. this was going to be about the matrix. That's yeah, so Apple Arcade later this year. Apple Card coming this summer. Wow, yes. so wait. No, this looks like some sort of uh, alternative history thing. That's cool. Oh, Battlestar Galactica the, and the producers. Apparently the Russians, Star Russians got to the moon, and that's what happened. This is what that is, I think. Am I reading this wrong? <laughs> I'm checking. Tell me if I'm reading this wrong, somebody, because it looks like... Looks like Apple wishes the Russians got on the moon first. I mean, you heard it here first. Jeff Bacalar is calling it. I mean, it's clear as day. <laughs> Apparently we lost the space race is what this is about. Red cutting history. And he's going to drive to the moon. That's what's happening here. <laughs> it is you guys really should have two windows up because otherwise this doesn't make any sense what we're saying. Well, you're yeah. the only guy with an uh, earpiece. What's happening? Well, I also have the captions on. We should put the captions on, on our, for our feed, guys. Uh, what's happening? It, the captions are going very fast. He's, he's like, like, no, you can't drive to the moon. He's like, I'm going to try. I don't care. Watch me. And there he goes. I mean, this could be a game change. I don't know. I feel like with everything that's happening this year, NASA's got its um, its returning to the moon plan. Uh, Blue Origin has the blue moon. If, in terms of, you know, in terms of space coverage, which is what I spend my other half of the day on at CNET, yeah. like it's, it's all anyone cares space about. It's gonna cool. be It's going to be massive this year. So I think Apple is definitely trying to to jump on top of that. And Tim's back on stage and he is all about moon fever. It looks like a serious, uh, pr I mean, I'm look, as much as I am still sort of unsure about Apple TV Plus, I do think some of the stuff they have has pretty impressive production values. Yeah. So that looked pretty dope. Anything uh, about if it is an alternate history, is it? Or did I read that I couldn't wrong? tell at that point. Um, right? so here's, here's something interesting though. I don't think they showed any trailers at the giant Oprah event. They just showed like a no, bunch of stuff. No, they did. They, was, they showed some of that Jennifer trailers? Aniston thing. But this is like a full, real trailer of an actual show. He said, Tim Cook said he's actually seen the entire season. He says it's really good. So you got to believe him. Oh, I'm glad he enjoyed it. I'm shocked he Could enjoyed it. Could you imagine it. if he's like, ah, it wasn't that and good. And look, guys, it's garbage, but we'll get it. Uh, we'll knock it out of the park next time around. <laughs> yeah, alternate history moon landing. Um, cool. Yeah. Nice. Scott Stein, alternate history moon landing. I'm in. That's all you need to know. This is not refreshing for me. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Very cool. Oh, that's why. Because this my, my feed was all busted. Sounds like they're talking about uh, multi uh, multi profile use of uh, TV OS, which so, is good. That's obviously following uh, you can separate your logins with mm -hmm. your families, which is good. I mean, Netflix has that, so you, I I can tell when someone else has used my profile. Yeah. Yeah. Dad occasionally comes in. It's he's all somehow accidentally log logged onto my Netflix from a different state. 
and it's like all these weird Scandi noir TV shows. And oh, really? So, yeah, it's it's very confusing. Interesting. It's really messing up my algorithms. Yeah, but sometimes that's kind of fun. Yeah, you, you know? just keep it keep it interesting. Yeah, it's a huge, huge thing. Uh, Scott really wants this to be a, an option for iOS that you could have multi-users. When you have an iPad Pro, you can't. It's yours. It's one device. Isn't right? that we've been talking about profiles on iPad for ever? Over a decade. How long has the iPad been out? A decade? It's been a while. It's been that. We've been mm. since day one. That was sort of like and a no-brainer. Why haven't you done this? For thing? TV, it makes a lot of sense as well because, like you were saying, Claire, your, your recommendations get all screwed up. Yeah. And if they're going all the way with with, uh, with this TV plan of theirs, this would be very important that you can have these really well tailored suggestions. Well, it's not just about our personal preferences. It's not about. Um, what we are watching, it's about how much data they get on us as viewers, right? Mm -hmm. So the ability to, uh, to go into, say, I don't know, I know what you love, Claire loves a lot of Shit's Creek, for example, or, you know, whatever shows you're into. That's not an Apple show, but I just I watch a lot of it. It's funny. Um, yeah, so I think that kind of preference tailoring is not just good for us as users, but it's good for them. Uh, We're up to Apple Music now. Well, there's, there's a note about... Uh... Xbox One S and PlayStation controller support coming to Apple TV. What? This is not a rumor. This is from Scott's uh, live uh, piece in the live blog. They so, just showed an Xbox controller. And a PlayStation controller. And a PlayStation 4 controller. And I'm losing my damn mind. Streaming games then, huh? Not just the local games. I'm curious if they're going to have any of that kind of stuff. That uh, Nvidia's got GeForce now. Which is, I use that on my shield, I really like that. Right, uh, not to interrupt, they, uh, I do remember so, uh, Sony just got on to iOS in terms of like their remote play stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because we were talking about it on our, on our podcast and I said, well, I wish I could connect a DualShock 4 mm -hmm. to an iPad from my mouth to Tim Cook's ears. My work here's done, Claire. Oh, what a dream. We're now hearing about how Apple's going under the sea where, okay, we've got a whole bunch of stuff on TV now. So they obviously a big content play for these guys. Um, you know, we saw that a bit with the previous TV event. We, we discussed Oprah, but it makes sense. When, you're, when you can only sell so much hardware, you start to sell services. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw with that beautiful Venn diagram at the start, the, uh, the Apple circle. Hardware, software, services, and playing into that services market is really where it's at for them as a revenue generator. I don't know if they're going to be charging for the new TVOS screensavers that they showed off with the oh. fish. I mean, they could make a killing that way. It's about time we went underwater. It's just that. And also with the watch OS, people were talking about it'd be great to be able to buy third-party watch faces because right now it's pretty locked down. You can't do that. Right. I know that's a thing Scott Stein loves to complain about. Uh, he <laughs> loves to say, hey, I want my watch faces. Where are they? Where have they been hiding? Mm -hmm. Every other smartwatch on the market, you can pretty much customize to your heart's content. And now it seems like it's watch OS he's time. getting... Yeah. To watch OS, uh, part of the, the we're going to have feature here. breakdowns. Kevin Lynch will be on in a second. Right, we've got Kevin coming on stage. So our live blog's actually ahead oh gosh, of the stream. Is he stream, wearing guys. the same it sneakers is. as Tim? Oh, God, that's so tacky. Oh, maybe they're just really good friends. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is wild. We are ahead of our stream. Yes. So, <laughs> so if you want to be even further ahead, actually, the only way you could get further ahead of us is by being at the event, which or is impressive. Travel. Yes, or time Do travel. We, if so, no, is no that one's not got that available yet. yet. All right, I mean, if so we're, if we're also sitting on time travel. We should be doing other stuff. Yeah, I would think with it. I mean, other Scott than, Stein is going to be the first time tra traveler in the CNET team. I definitely know that true. for sure. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, he's going to volunteer, <laughs> and so maybe, App, maybe God be with him. <laughs> Apple's showing off new watch faces. Yay! That's cool. That's I mean, look, it's a long time coming. Uh, you knew they were going to do it. But just like with a lot of Apple stuff, sometimes it takes a little while. It's slow going. I mean, oh, the California dial. That's the one I think uh, second from the right. That blue. Oh, rich complica Oh, rich complications. Someone's got a rumble lesson at eleven thirty. Okay. <laughs> and the visualization of the sun twenty four hours a day. That's cool. Yeah. Spoiler alert: half of the time it's not doing so much. <laughs> JK, the, the sun is still there when you can no longer see it, everyone. Don't this worry. This is something else. I'm taking a look at the watch faces again. Digital faces, California dials, blah, blah, blah. I, okay, I'm sorry, guys. This... What? This is cool. Is it? You don't think it's cool? I think this is cool. It's because uh, no other... I mean, look, 
I don't have an uh, an Apple Watch, but I appreciate. Wa I love watches. Sure, sure then, would the, love some sort of app that told me when to take my life saving medication. But these but watch faces. But this is cosmetic, Ooh. and that's important. I yeah. mean, you know, that to me that was something that was like really missing from this. And I, look, like, yes. Like, uh, health functionality, like, that's <laughs> yes, great. Yes, don't die, Claire. Don't We'd love die, that. Right, take your pills, okay? I don't know how anyone took pills before an Apple Watch came yeah. along. But, um, but yeah, like, this stuff is, is long overdue, and it's about time. And also, I think you're, you're right. You said earlier, quality of life stuff. It, these are the fun things. As soon as you get your Apple Watch, it's all about testing out. I remember when I got um, the Toy Story right. faces, and that was, like, the most exciting thing to me. I it's was a like, big deal. Yeah, well, don't test my... Uh, don't test my steps or anything like that but um all right we're talking about different apps oh voice memos there you go okay this we're, is this is it this is your time this is my time Focus. I, just, I just heard something about tip calculations on your apple watch let's just take a moment to say already i'm so confused in this country and i will either just <laughs> overpay someone yeah. or horribly underpay service people i'm very sorry i just don't understand it's not your fault we're, all, we're uh, you, the united states is, has a very complicated relationship with tipping it's confusing yeah it's just us it's I mean, not it's not you it's i us. i thought it was 10% now it's 20% and well, i was like no one sent me a memo yeah, is when it, was it 10% was it, was it, was i came it, here when i was 50s? in primary school yes it and was a I, time travel related thing well, uh, like uh, it's uh, for me, it's always easy with. Oh, you want to? Maybe we shouldn't talk about tipping. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, they're saying that they're going to make it possible to run independent apps on the watch. No need for an iPhone app, whatsoever. So that means you can have these. Uh, Apple Watch App Store is on the watch, so you yes. can actually get apps that way. So there you don't need you to go. have like a companion app on your phone. Perfect. It's actually going to run on its own. You do. You have video memo memos. You have audio books. Uh, you've got calculator and the tip calculator, obviously, and yep. the split the bill feature, which is always helpful because yeah. you're like how much what did you get i don't know what i got what did you get it's like just the watch will do it just, yeah. so, I just don't speak have into this, this conversation. And we'll have our... make this social awkwardness go away apple watch this is a uh, scott saying this is what wear os has that's android's version of of the watch which is really really bad and <laughs> thankfully watch os has it now too because look i'm i use android devices a lot i've tried to use a, a, a smart watch and i just don't get it okay i use a smart watch sometimes i use that amaze fit Mm. Isn't it amazing? Do you know bit? what that is? It's, a, it's the Amaze Fit Bip. Oh, the Bip, yes. The Bip. Oh. Like it's $50, little it's, guy? It's $11. Oh. And no, no, it's very cheap, though. And I, because I only need something for. Oh, okay, we're up to health and fitness. Okay, Keep well, going. no one cares about that. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I just need, I just want it for texting and calls. Mm -hmm. Like, and you can customize it. You can say, like, I only want you to. 30 days of battery life. All What's right. up? That's kind of That's important. amazing. That's ama you, you just glossed over that? That's really yeah, good. 30 days. You got to charge your Apple Watch every 10 minutes. I, I think it's a little oh. bit better than that. Every yeah. day. But yeah, that, that's something that is irritating. Because if you want to do sleep tracking, you've got to take it off. And you're like, wait a second. Wait, wait. I need this thing on my wrist, my yeah. wrist all the time. But it's not working half the day. Right. It's one thing to take out, you know, taking your phone out or your earbuds and you've got to charge them. That's fine. Because, you know, it's You use there. them for a couple hours at a time. But this is your watch. And that's one of the other things I hated about smartwatches is... Just trying to get the time to show up. It's like, okay, flick wrist. Okay, look, you must realize that this means I want to see you now. Yes. So I just have one of these boring ones that just tells me the time, which is crazy. <laughs> I know. It's so antiquated. Yeah. You should just throw it in the garbage. All right. So we're getting some stuff about um, Apple Watch and activity now. And we're talking not just daily uh, rings, but long-term trends. And I think she said 90 days. So seeing yes. your exercise over a long range, which ma makes a lot of sense, 100%. right? You know, uh, closing the rings one day and then the next day you've had a, a pretty hectic evening the night before and you're closing no rings. Right. You need to be able to know that you didn't do well last yeah. week. So no matter how many rings you close today, you can't undo last you, week's failures. You can't failures. undo that entire pizza you <laughs> yeah. ate in one sitting. Can, can we show my screen right now? Because I have some screenshots uh, from, the feet, from the live show. Uh, the keynote that is, take a look at some of the apps they were showing off. One of them is Headspace, which, so you can check in. I mean, I'm, I like meditation just fine, but these these little emoji guys look pretty upset. Yeah, so then, that's that's the official Headspace yes. app, right? Which is obviously massively popular. Then there's the Colgate app, which gives you a two-minute timer and a giant button that says, start brushing. Which, look, I guess that should, I mean, my, no. my toothbrush right Unless your toothbrush is, I mean, look, I have a Quip thing that I yeah. got. They just got one of those, and those are fine, but like... Who the hell is, okay, I'm starting brushing, Go. remind me. <laughs> 
and brush. And br- I stopped. No, it's got a button. I don't know if you can talk to it yet. They also have one where you can show it's, how to rotate. It's one thing if it's connected through Bluetooth and it just knows, mm. but like, come on. Yeah. What are we doing? You're doing stopwatch I, tooth I, I did see. I did see a toothbrush that does have Bluetooth connectivity, and I was like, That's why? Although fun. Bluetooth brush would have been a funnier name. Because but. it's the internet of garbage and everything needs a Bluetooth Yes, connection. we should rename it to the internet of trash, yeah. not things. You can keep the letters. Just call yeah. it trash instead of it. things. I have it. How much data do you need? Well, I mean, we're talking now about hearing health, so this is okay. another health and wellness aspect of the Apple Watch, and it will tell you when your headphones are playing too loud, oh, or good. maybe you're in a loud environment, so the sound levels around you have hit okay. 90 decibels. Let me call that up. Um, oh, and privacy statement, Apple doesn't record or save your audio. Okay. So they're, they're that's trying useful. To, that's good to know. That's useful. I mean, it makes sense if you've got headphones, although, you know, sometimes when I'm out in a noisy area, I've got a very conservative hearing warning on my phone. It says, you f- it's up too loud. And yeah. it's like, I actually just want to turn this up. And then you have to pull the phone out, mm-hmm. like cancel Unlock the it, warning yeah. message and say, I'm happy with. All right. So this is, I've guessed, <laughs> we've got a female executive on the stage for a reason. And we're talking about cycle tracking now. So I think this is the cycle app. Um, please tell me that this isn't the only time we're going to see a female executive on the stage when they're talking about menstrual health. But... I would hope so, that, yeah. it's, that we see, well, yes, the, that the right people are doing yeah, yeah, this, yeah. yes. <laughs> but you won't be the only one on the stage, yeah. I'd imagine. But yeah, I think we have the, the screens for the exercise stuff, the standing things. I don't have the tracking app as far as I can see on the live blog. So we'll get to that once we get uh, that, that photo up. Yeah, so it's kind of showing you've got a, like a swipeable go. interface to sort this of... This is great. Yeah. This is very important. Well, I mean, it makes... What a crazy idea. Like, you know, maybe take care of or, like, actually focus on the other half of the planet of people. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And it, makes, it makes such sense rather than, like, the, con- the existing technology seems to be, like, writing in your paper diary or, like, circling a day. I've seen movies. That's how they do it. And then, like, if someone's worried that they're pregnant or excited that they're pregnant, they tap their pen on that page and look pensive. There seems to be, like, maybe we could do a more updated version of that, seeing as our diaries are now on our phones. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Like, my wife has, like, a, an app that she uses. Yeah. But, like, the, I could see this being a yeah. fantastically well, convenient. Why thing. go to a third-party app if Apple can make it for you? Yes. Although, if you want them knowing your cycle. Oh, yes. What's going to happen now? Oh, gosh. I would imagine... Please reiterate the privacy messages because all <laughs> Let of this... Let me reread that. <laughs> yeah. Tons and tons of targeted ads. They don't really do that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like... Maybe they'll offer TV shows based on this other piece of data. I don't know. Look, they, they say they don't sell our information, so yeah, let's keep it. Well, they're not selling it. Can they use it for themselves? Maybe. They're like, okay, your TV uh, ideas will be different. Your music playlist might change. Mm, potentially. We're talking about mindfulness now. and uh, Apple Watch does have that breathe reminder. Yeah. Which, okay, when it came out, it all sounded very stupid, but mm-hmm. I think it's kind of a nice way of just sort of checking in with yourself so many of us use like meditation apps Mm -hmm. or like uh, I listen I have some podcast tracks that are for meditation and it's it's really useful if something's just here as a device just kind of taking a moment and just kind of checking in I initially thought everyone took the breathe thing as you know some sort of instruction on how to live your life because you cannot function without the Apple Watch anymore I don't know I think I think if they're talking about health and wellness which is where wearables is really going makes sense to kind of go into that uh, they're reiterating right now, you control your data. So this data is not for sale, hopefully. That's what they're trying to make sure that since they are telling us how much they can track of you, like it's mm. yours, be cool about that. Uh, I, I don't know about the, the decibel meter thing, honestly. In New York City, I, I would imagine it would constantly be going off. It's like <laughs> you're walking by a jackhammer, you know yeah. that? It's like, I noticed, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That's a jackhammer. <laughs> like, are you in a construction zone? Yeah, all the time. All right, so we're walking through some of the customizations of the watch faces right now. So complications, different things showing the, uh, showing the ability to kind of control that volume. Mm-hmm. Oh, and she's, okay, she's getting everyone in the crowd to cheer, and we saw the ambient noise go up from 78 decibels to a kind of a 90 range. And that so got in the yellow, though. Oh, so it's not, I mean, clearly the WWDC crowd is not hitting the red zone. I guess not. Yeah. So that was, so I guess that meant like, so yellow's like getting close, yeah. and then red, you're deaf. Yeah. Well, I guess yellow is like maybe the crowd could get afford to get a bit more amped up. Right. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they're not excited about the complications. <laughs> Scott Stein's still losing his mind. But where is the watch face store? There's still no watch face store. I really hope Scott doesn't go home 
said, like, I don't want to see him come back here with that watch face mm. store access. So I mean, I can see why Apple, for your Scott. they're very tight to control the face of their watch, right? Like there's no other uh, launchers for iOS. They, they don't allow certain things to change. Right. So the idea that somebody else's watch face on there, I don't know if that's more like a wallpaper thing mm. where they would allow that functionality in the future or why are they being so controlling on the watch face Mm. thing right now. Maybe there are some devs in the crowd that would love to develop their own watch face and yes. they're kind of dreaming up ideas of what different ways to visualize that audio, the kind of the decibels going too loud. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got the right people in the crowd. Could so be cool. They, they're, are you seeing, or am I, I might be a little uh, behind now, but they're doing a voice memo demo. Oh, the memo demo. It's so what we've Claire, all waited for. You're in good shape. I mean, the, yes. the UI is amazing. If you get my screen again, it looks like a giant uh, red dot. You can see it right there. See that? Look at that. Oh, beautiful. It beautiful. Is, voice you know, memo. It's all I need. Honestly, you don't need anything more, more than that for yeah. recording. Start. It's not showing you like a waveform as it's going or anything. So, pretty simple. It's black and white and red. So, nice. Very nice. And so we've got some, um, we've got language, language learning. So the Chinese cards, learn to play, uh, learn to speak Mandarin from your watch. And then we've got listen live to sports. That's cool. Sport? Do you call it sports here? Whatever you want. What do you call it there? We call it sport. Just all of them? Yeah, we call it maths and sport. Oh, got it. Yeah, you guys are all crazy hamburgers no, that, eat people. But like, up I'm here. okay with that. I get it. Yeah, it's not like that. It's not a crazy. It's not like the time I said slippery dip. Yeah, and I was like, live what on stage, is that? And you were like, I don't know what that oh, is. That's right. What yeah. was that again? It's a slide, like slide. a play slide. Right. It seems yeah. like a lot more syllables just right? for no. slide. Yes. Was it was That's a sweeter. I thought it was a twisty slide. Oh look, that. I would call. And somehow we're in slippery dip chat again. <laughs> Very important. If you were yeah. playing that drinking game at home, this is the time to have a shot. The word slippery dip, and that is a trip. Triple word score word. Well, yeah, looking at, uh, I don't know about listening to a game from my watch. I guess that's pretty cool if you're going to yeah. be like running around and you want to listen to a baseball game. They're showing the Red Sox versus Baltimore, top of the 12th. I don't know when that happened because I thought Boston was in New York. So <laughs> That's an this, old game. This must be a different day, different time. That's it for watch OS. They're going to move on to iOS just, now. Yeah, okay. we had a so, couple of, and yep, there we go. There's the Pride watch face because it's uh, Pride Month at the moment, so... There's a little nod uh, to extend your rainbow band, which is great. And we've got Tim Cook back on stage shortly. I'm surprised they didn't like, also use the rainbow for the old Apple logo. They could have just oh, they could have, they could have cut out a little bit, but they didn't do that. Yeah. It's too bad. Missed opportunity. One day they'll do it. Oh, now they get to do something that Android can never do. Uh, Tim Cook is explaining how iOS 12 is on 85% of the devices which is a huge benefit if you're on totally. Apple's devices because you actually get the OS's when they are released. Mm. There's yes. no weird carrier things. It's one of the reasons every now and then I go, huh, uh, iPhone thing is not such a bad idea. You can actually get an update like when, when it happens, yeah. Yeah. not like months and months later, which is bizarre. It's, yeah, there's no two ways about it. Uh, that and sucks on Android. They're showing right now, based on the Android thing we were talking about, 10% on Android 9. Which is saying something, but then again, yeah. there are a lot of ton. There's a lot of low-end Android devices out there. Totally, there's yeah. a ton of them. So then, not being able to upgrade is not exactly the worst thing. I mean, and most of the planet is using an Android phone yeah. too. So. Yeah, when we think about a whole bunch of developing countries, you know, the the adoption in places like India, China, you know, they're not necessarily bigger iPhone market, so, you yes. know, we've got we to gotta expand. There is a it's very, huge amount of context left out of a graphic like that. Yeah, so. yeah. And I think it's very easy when you're in the States, certainly the love of Apple over here, because it's Without a homegrown a company, it's so much stronger than any other place I've been. You know, you compare it to Australia, iPhone is adored in Australia, but it's not quite the level that you see over in the States, you know. It wasn't started in a garage in... Uh, regional New South Wales, so I guess maybe we don't have as much of an affection for it. Right. It's interesting to come over here and huh. see, you know. I'm always curious mm. about that, so yeah. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Fred, Fred Arrighi is up on stage, he's the head of software. The man, iOS. the hair, he's on stage as, and I'm excited. As Scott Stein has dubbed him, Hair Force One <laughs> is on stage looking sharp. This guy is like uh, Captain America, essentially. Look at him, look at really? those eyebrows. Damn. This gentleman is going to explain excitedly about iOS and Mac OS. iOS 13. You've never seen somebody so excited about software. I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like, I've seen a lot of presentations, and you're like, oh, shoot me. <laughs> this guy is thrilled about it. He's explaining that face, uh, faster face ID is coming. 30% faster. 
in mm. iOS 13. 60% smaller app updates. Okay. So that's interesting. So, that, you know, that horrible thing of your iPhone is out of space. It's like, no. Because those are pain points, right? When yeah. you pick up your phone and For you're sure. like. I mean, I don't know how much faster Face ID can get. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. You're like, oh, it's unlocked. Oh. That's wild. Oh. Well, I, I, this is so weird because even at, the, at Google I.O., they were talking about how they like figured something out with compression and oh, yeah. now app updates can be a lot smaller. Was it app updates or was it OS updates? I want to say it was it was app updates because they really can't do OS. Well, oh, it was also with like language services. and also like voice recognition yeah. stuff. Like, what just happened where like all data is now tiny? Mm. Well, that and remember that they're talking to the the dev market here. Yeah. So saying your updates are going to be smaller. We don't. They won't. There won't be such an impediment for a consumer to download totally. your latest updates. So that's a real benefit for that um, dev audience. Oh, I'm just thinking about this this idea of fa faster face idea. Still. I um, and this just did from Scott Stein on the live blog, we are undersea in jellyfish land, dark mode. So oh, cool. I feel like Scott has officially crossed the Rubicon of insanity in the, uh, in the WWDC oh. conference hall. He is they've in been, the sunken place. He is in the sunken place. They've been hinting this whole time. That's why the graphics are all dark. Get it? Yes. That's what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. This comes to the portion of our program where it's like, Android's done has been doing that True. for a very long Dark time. Dark mode's been around. I mean, Samsung's had it before S Android proper has it. Right. Which is weird. It's great though. Like y you know, I don't know when I. I guess like you can beat the age old drum of like I have an Android. Oh, I these like are cool jellyfish. Customization and stuff like that, but this you know gives people yeah. that option. What Sorry, I'm just looking at the jellyfish, and if you look at them, they've kind of. All the kind of veiny things. Oh. I don't. I'm not totally up on my jellyfish anatomy, but they've done like maps in the veins of the jellyfish. That's right. a very cool graphic. That is cool and a strange thing, but nevertheless. And the screaming cool. for dark mode. That's a huge is... improvement for maps in general as well. Yes. I mean, when you, if you're driving with the, with one of these things <laughs> and it's bright as day, it's kind of a problem. We yes. just had a massive whistle from the crowd, and Federico is just like, "All right, <laughs> gosh, this guy. This is." This is the fonts of Dev World, yes, and I it love really it. really is. We've got a, a still up on my screen if you want to get all the darkness right here in one app, uh, one picture. You've got uh, even Take dark mode that. in iMessage too, so you don't have Mod to have it's cool. all white and all the, the darkness. Place. We have it all here. It's cool, definitely cool. He looks so excited about this, which is great. Uh, Scott's explaining my watch has been in dark mode for years. Wow, very funny. <laughs> very very good. Wise ass Scott Stein just really, coming in. They really are showing every app in different styles. Oh, so we're getting new an emojis because of this. The owl comes with dark mode. The owl wasn't See, around before. Because he was wasn't? nocturnal. So like, right. He's does well, it, he woke up. Does he not show up when you're in the other mode? <laughs> that actually would be kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool. What I'd really like to see is for my iPhone to split to kind of a an upside down, so you can have bright mode on the top of the screen, and then, you know, a demogorgon on the bottom half Why? of the screen, and just flip it around. I'm just thinking outside the box, man. I like it. That's yeah. A, you're thinking differently. <laughs> yeah, think yeah. different. Nice. No, I'm thinking different. Because right. why would I use the correct grammar? <laughs> Oh. Well, that's how you think different. That's, that's my spicy funny. take. I just... Speak wrong. Think <laughs> different. <laughs> Forget you, adverbs. You're not needed here. But yeah, so they're really going through. They're really going to show us every single thing. And oh. Claire, oh. hold on to your hat. Hold on. First, get a hat. Then hold on to it. What's happening? Apple official swipe typing is I didn't coming. do 12 years at mime school to not get my fake press hat right now. That's amazing. So official swipe typing. That was on my wish list for today, guys. That was initially the reason I switched from an iPhone to Android is because someone with an Android just showed me like, oh yeah, I'm just sending a text message and it blew my mind yeah. and all these neon shapes came out of right. it. <laughs> and I got rid of the I iPhone purely because... Really? What, well, That's only... This it, was, it, it crossed me. Okay. It was what no, crossed me over line because it was... Honestly, you think about what you use a phone for. It's like good camera. Sure. Realistically, your camera is pretty comparable on a lot of devices now. Texting, calling, emailing, web browsing, a lot of those are text input, right? So if you're Definitely. sitting there, just mint, 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 once again, with your monkey hands, mm -hmm. like, I just want to be able to swipe. That's cool, hey. <laughs> and before everybody writes in and go, oh, you have third-party keyboards, this is how long ago you switched over. Yeah. Yeah. Third-party keyboards did become a reality yeah. on, on iOS, and they don't work as well at times, I've noticed. Sure. At least in the early days when I was mm. still using it. But also, you shouldn't have to... Why is Apple making you download a third-party keyboard for something that is so popular and makes it so easy for you to use your device? They should be... Anytime that you know you have to go third-party for something, I'm always wondering, 
why isn't Apple or why isn't right, like why, why is that, that home grown? Yeah. yeah. I will not lie, I did not know that was not a thing on, <laughs> on iOS. Today I learned something. Yeah, the more you know. They're just showing every app in dark. I'm telling you, they've got, they've got reminders. I mean, look, they've got three hours to fill. I get it. They've got reminders. They've got uh, a camping trip reminder. Like again, list. we made everything that was white black. And the white fonts are there so you can see the text yes. on the black. Because if we went black on black, you might have a hard time seeing it. Yeah. We tried it. It didn't work. <laughs> Not that well. Guys, 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 I've got it. It looked it's like It's got to be white text. <laughs> it looked like it's the phone was off. <laughs> You could just imagine three people, like posers, completely like, I could see the black on black. Yeah, yeah. I, could, I knew what it said. It's just really minimalist. Yeah, you know. All right, what's he getting into now? Because this doesn't look like you can, night mode. So, nope, it's night mode. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm looking at our live blog, which is way ahead of the live stream. So that's where I'm staring at these just apps that are black. Yeah, I... Well, this is important, I guess, for the developers to know that they can also do this. Sure. Hopefully they don't lock out other apps because if th that would be really dumb. That's really nifty. If you set a reminder and you tag a person in the reminder, next time you're chatting, you'll be able to chat about that. You'll get a little bump That's to cool. say that, you know, you set a reminder that involves Jeff. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Like yeah. I said, I'm all, I am Mr. Quality of Life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the way you not drink coffee like, and poison your body nah, says nah, otherwise. Nah, nah, well, the coffee's not poison, but yeah. yes, other things. Are, but, like, uh, you know, I just like little incremental things where it's like, look, we get it. This would make so much more sense if we did this. So we did mm -hmm. it. Maybe four years later than you wanted, but we did it. They're showing off maps, and as Scott puts it, maps. Crowd is silent so far. Because it's the Apple maps? Yeah, so they're showing off the Apple mapping vehicles. We had one car, and, and we, we used it a lot. <laughs> Okay, new maps in maps will roll out to U.S. by end of 2019. Looks 3D-like, more detailed, parentheses, by Scott. Who uses iOS maps? Man, they're like, they're super stoked and jazzed about the things that we already have. It yeah. doesn't matter what platform you have, because if you have an iPhone, you use Google Maps. I really, I right? mean, Yeah, well, they've said that, um, Federighi said that we've outfitted literally hundreds of plans and cars with custom sensors and LiDAR and traveled four million miles to remake the map. Yeah, I that mean, seems like a big waste of money. Is what and I'm also, really curious what they did before that. Yeah, they exactly. Like, the what, optics of eight miles. launching without all of that groundwork, so to speak. Uh, right? Like, think about, and we burned more gas than any other <laughs> company in the history of the world. It's, it's, yeah, that, that was a really painful moment where they decided to, where Apple decided to go, you know, Google, forget you. It's like, no, 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 don't do that. No, 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 what is this? <laughs> you yes, can plant an know. iPhone in the dirt after it's broken and <laughs> grow a tree, but that we was, just burned the equivalent was, of Antarctica. I was so yeah. upset about that. And then you had, when you would get a text that had a, an actual address, you'd click it and it takes you to the iOS maps, and you're yeah, like, no, you're no, like, no, 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 not this map. That? And I was like, you know what I'll do? I'll jailbreak my phone, and I'll make Google Maps the default. And then I put widgets on it, and then I go, why do I have an iOS phone? I should have an Android. I, ugh, I, to me, this is baffling to me. I yeah. mean, well, like, not, not baffling. And I'm not trying to pick sides here, but it's like, this, this war's over. Mm. Oh, talk to MapQuest. They thought it was over. I'm just they saying. They had it. Oh, I'm sure every MapQuest? Of course. I, what do you mean? Googlers. I had a car with a floor. What do you think was on... <laughs> what do you think was on the crumpled up map quest directions? Uh, this I, seems silly to me. Yeah, so we're talking about a, I, I think I'm not sure which stage is up to. Yeah, so we're looking at this binoculars feature, which is street view. Um, no, it's not it's called look around. View. It's yeah. called look. It's right, called the sorry. looky loo yeah. dipsy do around. The looky loo dipsy do around. <laughs> it's it's sort of we're seeing some like really smooth graphics being able to kind mm -hmm. of pan around, zoom up through side streets. I think we're in we're in Chinatown. It looked like from that um that gateway, and so it, it's it's street view. Like I'm sorry, but isn't this not insane? I know we don't have the well, context of the audio, but it's just like it's relatively important. Don't do this if you're going if you're going to use a device and you're going oh, it's all here. It should have these features. Yeah. You shouldn't, like you were saying earlier, it shouldn't have to go to third parties yeah. for this. I guess. Why, it's just it's a pity that it's that late. Why would you go to, in, into the mapping area at this point? I thought it's kind of seemed late stage to the game, but they're trying to catch up, which is admirable. They have yeah. a ton of money. I guess they got to do something with it. I don't know. I mean, hey, Here's, if in a, a year's time the use goes to 50-50, I'll eat my hat. But Okay, we'll you buy know. you a nice, nice rice paper hat. Yes, I need something <laughs> edible. Can't yeah. just be like a regular hat. Yeah. So Federighi's back on stage now, and this, I guess, 
what he's talking about here is one of the reasons maybe you wouldn't necessarily choose Google Maps. And he's saying that your data, your mapping data is completely private. So, true. you know, okay. which stores am I visiting? Sure, Where fair. am I going? What routes am I taking? You know, if you're taking the same route every day, then chances are Google knows where you, knows where you live, right. knows where you work, knows your habits, and builds up a very accurate picture of you. And we know that Google, Google is a company that works with advertisers. So right. maybe Apple is here saying like, eh, look, we, we don't the... necessarily have the newest app map technology right. we're but the alternative for yeah if you're privacy focused sure. then you don't have to have that data go that's somewhere valid else. that's valid i'm cringing because i'm looking at the slide that says junction view real-time transit siri guidance Ugh. share eta and flight status so these maps will have some cool features but i mean siri is also another area where apple was way ahead when they bought siri they had something really interesting there and it kind of got lapped by amazon and google so the idea that Siri is going to be helping you, guide you through the maps, I guess it's a good thing. Another one of those things I, I almost forgot about existed because Siri mm. is so, what's the word? It's, it's just bad. I'm just going to say it. Like, it's, it's not Bixby bad, but it's bad. Yeah. Mm. Right? So like, it, it, this is something that I really wonder if they're going to rededicate any money or effort. If they're building maps out, is Siri going to get smarter? I know there's Siri shortcuts and there's supposed to be all these ways that apps can work with Siri at this point, but I haven't seen anything like huge pop up with Siri in a long time. So we're on to privacy now, which I think as I kind of alluded to at the start of the show, I'm privacy not Claire, so I care about this. Um, that the ability to have uh, telling an app that you only want to give it location data once. That's and cool. then That's you can good. say like, take that away and then you have to ask the next time. If you want to know how often they're monitoring your location, Apple can tell you, and it's not letting apps scan your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to infer your location. And then they've gone on to, they're talking about that idea, you've probably seen the buttons of sign in with Facebook, mm -hmm. sign in with Google. They're doing a new feature called sign in with Apple. So That's an interesting, they'll do with that. Yeah, um, look, you can't argue with this. This is the one thing Apple can hang over yeah. everyone's head. They don't treat you like a product. They treat mm. you like, you know, because they, they don't sell you the way Google sells you or right. Facebook mm. sells you. And Apple, you can... Apple makes good products. Apple makes yeah. great stuff that people want to buy. So that is how they're making their money. That and with is, services. Right, and that services. That Venn diagram once right. more. Right, and I feel like we're just regurgitating their uh, whole business plan, but that's the truth of it. Yeah, we're getting um, a massive cheer now for... Um, the ability to, you can either share your email address or you can hash it into just a random, um, you know, fc452bd5e at privaterelay.appleid.com. So That's there's a really massive cool. cheer to be able to so, say, I don't have to give you my email address if I'm right. signing into something, which is big. That's cool. That's because, fantastic. That's I mean, awesome. In a modern era, right, your your email is everything. Sure. It's your two-factor. It's, it's, well, it's, it's part of your, your identity. I know certainly that when I share my email address, I have my burner email that, you know, I can sign up to a coffee club with, but then my real email, that's the one I keep right. sacred. That is an uh, incredibly smart thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are other tools to do that where you have to sign up for something. You're like, okay, sure. I'm going to, I'll find this temporary email address with like Gorilla Mail, whatever it was called. Yeah. And like, this is such a, a quality of life thing. Jeff, you're right on this. Like, it's the same kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Why wasn't this a thing? Right. Yeah. I mean, this actually, they really are pushing hard with the privacy thing. You control your data again. It's, it's very, very interesting as a move. Why would you want to use Apple stuff? Here's your reason. Yeah. And they've really pivoted towards that privacy po focus. You know, they had um, all those advertisements. Was it at CES this year? And yes. that big yes. banner saying everything's always private forever and always. Which I think, you know, when Google had such a massive presence at the show, I think that was that was duly noted. Yeah, I mean, and that is what they will continue to bicker about for forever. I mm. guess. I mean, you, look, Google hasn't done nothing in in the way of yeah. privacy. I think they've taken some baby steps, but uh, this is definitely something Apple can and should boast. Well, about. they're just different models, right? It's yeah. about you deciding what's more important to you, or what's, I guess, what trade offs you're willing to make. Right. Yeah. Right. And so we're talking HomeKit now. Um, Showing off some kind of camera footage. Yeah, so talking about the fact that most home cameras upload video um, <laughs> to identify a leaf versus a person, whereas they're creating the, and launching HomeKit secure video. So the video is analyzed in your home on your local iPad or HomePod or Apple TV, 
and not even Apple can see that video footage. So I guess a lot of security software, a lot of security video companies, they kind of build themselves as being able to be like, just send it to us and yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting because we've seen some things from Google as well. The amount of on-device computing that's ca capable now, which seems like there was a reason why this stuff was uploaded because this, it was no way to figure it out on the right. machine. It needed to be cloud computing. But that means these yeah. products are getting to the level of, of sophistication where it can actually identify a leaf versus a person. Another thing with AR and, and the idea of figuring out where things are in space. Mm. So this is, this is another smart move. I'm interesting, uh, interested to see how developers end up using this with their apps. They're showing with, with uh, Logitech, I guess, will have a version of, or they will be using HomeKit's secure video. HomeKit, easy for me to say. <laughs> Let's see, HomeKit to routers. Automatically firewall off each accessory. Well, that's interesting. So they can't talk. To routers? So routers can't talk to other things, I guess? Yeah. I mean. Routers can't talk to anything. They don't have voice boxes. Right. Yeah. Well, potentially um, to stop an insecure device, right? So they feel like a camera and that's got a flaw and you try right. to get in. You're not going to get into the entire network through this little janky little thing you bought. Which, so is, be, which is how all of those spot net attacks yeah. and things yeah. happen like, because oh, they yeah. get the one dodgy insecure device. It's like, are you using this tiny outlet, smart outlet? Did from you buy your router at the checkout? <laughs> 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 All right, we're on to messages now, and oh, it's a Federighi and emoji, and his hair is just as good. I think it was styled on him. I don't know if you can see. That. I'm gonna, you see this, uh, this amazing look, of Mr. Federighi. And so now he's going to be able to match his profile picture with messages. So you'll be able to see a little emoji for everyone that is in your contacts, unless I guess they're an Android user. Maybe you could save your own emoji for your friends. That involves me being like. Just, I gotta add emoji you before you can be in my phone book. <laughs> That's probably gonna happen. You can share a name and photo or an emoji. Now, apparently, the influencers are coming out. Oh, As wow. Dan Ackman says, oh God, influencers. That was not an actual Ackerman impression, I will say. This is amazing. We're getting customizable. We've got um, influencers on the screen. I obviously know who they are. Yeah, who are they? Who is that? Oh, I mean, they're just really Who's... great. They've Who's got a lot the of blue followers. hair person? There are a lot of people, Jeff. No, I'm asking you. You're like well, Mrs. Influencer. Yeah. Uh, I aficionado. missed it because I was talking to you guys about talking routers. But you're able to put piercings on. You're able That's to change cool. the color of your hair. You can change your teeth. So if you've got a bit of a tooth gap or, yeah, all That's right. That's neat. This is sort of like uh, we're really getting into like the uh, Xbox avatar universe. you got vampire teeth too. That's pretty neat in case you... Want to dress up for Halloween? Or if you're a vampire, yeah. Too. Oh, cool. <laughs> I don't. You know, this Why is, you don't want you don't want there to be braces options? Okay. What I, what I'm loving about this is that this is going to be used a thousand times more than like so much more important stuff. Yeah. Like well, yeah. you're you going to spend get two all day on stage, and you yeah. bam, you have sold it. There yeah. is something kind of amazing about it though. And we've seen Samsung try to copy this to horrific results. Yeah. The AR emoji, I think that's what they call those, and it's just like, uh, 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 it's like, kill me, why am I alive? <laughs> Versions of you. Versions of these why really... was I created to feel pain? <laughs> uh, this, mm, but uh, these things are cute and they're, they're gonna be fun and the people like doing uh, messages that way. My son loves doing it with yeah. his phone. That's cool. Um, Does it speak to you, Claire? Look, those speak to me. I mean, we're now up to an emoji stickers, which I guess also speak to me. I mean, the an emoji thing is fun, but once again, you know, it's it's a kind of a, an aesthetic thing. It's a little kind of a nice a nice cream on the top, but whether it's going to change the way you use a phone. But that said, that's how people, people it lose is. it over and, this stuff. It's so I don't, fun. I don't want for a second for people to think that, you know, I'm like shaking my fist at like... Oh, you the, are old man. You're no, no, but look... To me, it's like, that's fine. You should have this. I don't want to hear about it at your, pre at your keynote. Like, yeah. you should definitely have this. It's super cool. But, like, kids, are, like, people aren't watching. They're not watching but we're this. We're old and boring. No, I know. I, but well, also, yeah. I mean, you know how I mean? many 17-year-olds like, like you know, are watching WWDC? Exactly. Well, all the kid developers that are schooling us. And that could sure, be a thing, yeah. yeah. That's a thing, too. But, like, I don't know. To me, it's like, this is amazing. It's very cool. They're coming to other apps, too. They'll though. love this stuff. People who love, and like, it's not just kids, like, adults mm. love that stuff too. Yeah. You know, people who refuse to grow up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but like, 
I don't know. For me, we're it's... not the market for this. I think that's the result. Well, when we were like, who we are those be, influencers? Like, I want to see. The... Oh. I don't recognize her blue hair. <laughs> Wait, she <laughs> seems important. <laughs> How many? Does cells? she have a web blog? Oh, interesting. So they're talking about portrait lighting updates. So you can actually move the virtual lights. That's so, cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. See, that's cool. And that's amazing. That's there's a lot of grunt work going on behind the scenes to make something that just seems so obvious and intuitive. But you're like. This is just being done artificially. That's amazing. It's cool. I'm getting an iPhone now. <laughs> <laughs> You've never had an iPhone. I've never had an iPhone. Never owned an iPhone anyway. I don't know. Maybe one day I will. Just haven't really like been like, I want an iPhone. Wow. Well, any of these features would make you excited to even consider an iPhone because... It would make me excited if I had one, I guess. Because yeah. I'm thinking the... The privacy stuff's important. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I like, but I do like Google's services. Right. All right, so we're getting the these yeah. portrait lighting and mm -hmm. um, we're, <laughs> we're getting a whole bunch of uh, kind of design and graphics capabilities to video and the ability to dun, 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 rotate videos. Oh, cool. I mean, that seems something really obvious. Was but that not in there? Yeah. It wasn't, uh, right, I had, yeah, you had to download a separate app for that. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I guess you gotta catch We're up all learning. This is like a huge learning day. Mm. It's like, I guess I've gotten so used to things not working that way. I'm like, oh yeah, you, of course you could do an, iPhone, an iOS, but I had a separate app for that. When was the last time you had an iPhone? Uh, last iPhone, well I have one for work. I have an iPhone 10. Oh you do? Yeah. But should I do that? Yeah, totally. Just get a work iPhone? Should yeah, I do just that? And watch it collect dust and use it as a hotspot. It's awesome. Love it. Uh, what about you? You have one in Australia? In yeah, iPhone? yeah, I, um, I sort of switch between iPhone and Android, yeah. play around with things, but I'd say uh, it was the, yeah, the 10. Yeah, it was the most, so yeah, okay. this one. Sure, got <laughs> it. Because if, yeah. if you've got any feedback for us, you know, let us know on, on Twitter with the hashtag seen it live, because we could, we're really curious what you guys are thinking about this, because you know, we might be bragging a little bit on some of the stuff they're doing, but like, are, is any of this getting you guys excited? Like I'm maybe- Like I won't lie, an emoji designs and being able to kind of do cool new things with that. That's pretty cool. And I, also those those photograph editing tools, massively that's important. That's a huge Because thing. I think, you know, when I think about what I use my phone for, it's just photography and then, I guess, communication and internet access. So mm -hmm. photography, when you get new features, we've seen some real leaps and bounds um, in terms of hardware from other providers. So obviously Google Pixel's done some amazing stuff with photography. Uh, the Huawei phones, Super Zoom, things mm -hmm. like that in different markets. So I think iPhone had always been the leader when it came to photography. Oh, yeah. And I think maybe they lost that mantle a little bit. They were kind of, you know, when some of these other device makers came out and said, well, look at, look at what we can do. I think it's good to sort of reclaim some of that. Federighi says they're going to be changing the way we view photos using machine learning to remove duplicates when you're browsing and it'll create a diary of your life. That's going to be in a Photos app. That sounds interesting. I mean, it's, a, it's always a, anything that makes uh, photo organization simple is always huge with me because sure. you take tons of photos at every event you go to. I've got a kid, so I've got tons of pictures of him. So like, like wait, he's blinking in this one. Why do I have 15 shots in a row? Did he do burst mode? That would be nice on, uh, on photos. They're demoing the photos right now. Mm, we've got Justin TD on stage. Mm -hmm. Photos now lays out individual days with auto-playing video clips. Ooh, goodbye battery life. Hello, reliving awkward memories. <laughs> it's like, I don't remember falling down. Or... I mean, yeah, the other day I had some pretty amazing uh, karaoke videos that I had to warm up to actually replay because I was like, I don't need to see this right now. <laughs> I don't need to see the, I mean, look, Take That is a great band, but I don't want to relive what I was singing That's at 2 a.m. No, yeah. yeah. It should know. It should, it should know. It should <laughs> it's just know. Like, when it's, was this recorded? What time? In intelligent <laughs> processing to say, hey, Claire, I'm going to do you a favor. And yeah. I'm going to just, I'm not going to autoplay this. I'll one maybe for you. remind this, mm. uh, remind you of this again a yeah. few years down the road. Yeah. You know. Remember this time when you could laugh about it? Yeah, not yet. Yeah. I just realized, do you guys have Take That over here? Do you remember them, the boy band? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. I don't know. It's not ringing a bell. Are they also yeah, influencers? Okay. I don't I don't know. I mean, they, what are they, who were they? Like, they had like, was it Robbie Williams or? Oh, oh, I know that yeah, dude. Um, he was a solo guy. No. Yeah, no. I know what you're talking about. Robbie Williams, yeah. He was. Take that, yeah. Yeah. There we go. What, they had that really weird music video. Yes. Oh, one. where he lost his skin? Yes. Yeah. 
C. Rock DJ. Chuck. Mm. Hell yeah. And back to the photos app. Yeah. Scott, I, I love Scott's take on everything. Scott, Scott, like always thinks we're hurtling towards some dystopian, like dark future. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's nice to not be the only one for change. I you know, know. It's, it's pretty great. And he said, uh, "We're we're we're coming ever closer to a memory browser." But that's kind of it. Like, right? Our devices have become the stenographer of our lives. So. I um I was at a, a conference last year for Computex, which is around this same time of mm -hmm. the year, and it's where we see a lot of PC developments. And I was at a keynote from um, Nvidia, and Jensen Huang, their CEO, came up on stage. He was like, "This this my device is my memory. I don't like we are externalizing our brains." right now and you don't remember phone numbers you don't remember facts it's all sitting in this kind sure. of auxiliary device that you keep in your pocket which is a really interesting way of thinking about Definitely. things and you think about your photos like i had to uh when i was applying for my visa to come over here i was trying to remember where i was when i'd come to the country before and i was like i'll just look back through my yeah, photos because i don't i, I Vegas, put that info that on an yeah. external drive <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in my memory pod that I can lose in a, leave in a cab, yeah, no, too, I'm, actually. I'm screwed. I'm screwed. <laughs> Looks like they're going to be talking about Siri now. AirPod, HomePod, Siri, CarPlay. So mm. let's see how this is going to suss out, because I'm, I'm intrigued where, please get smarter. Please. It's all about software and services. Together. Together. Okay, new features for I, iOS 13 with AirPods. Oh! Okay, nifty feature. Siri's going to be able to read your incoming messages to you as soon as they arrive and read them out through your AirPods. Does That's that excite nice. you? That's is sure, that, sure. Is that firing is your if, engines? This is if I have if I have AirPods or if I have what? How AirPods, this... yeah. A iOS 13 has got new. Uh, I can read your messages to you. I mean, nah. Okay. I mean, I just don't know what will make you happy. Nothing. Well, Nothing. You have an impressed okay. eye, as yes. Claire. I'm sorry. I'm, well, I'm dead inside, which is it's a real just, thing. It's just. I come here every year I with know. WWDC. I, know. I try and turn out fun <laughs> things for you. I have all of these things under the table. No, no. Bag of tricks. None of us, yeah, none of us knows what's Just. coming down the pipeline. Uh, no, I like the idea of assistance in your ear. I mean, yeah. I like, I, but I don't, I don't like the AirPods, the design, honestly, and I don't like the way it fits. Yeah. And they, there's a whole lot about them I don't like, personally. Yeah. Uh, but that's like a, just a, a fit design, essentially. Yeah. I can't doesn't work with me. Yeah, um, well, I saw my colleague, you know, within one day of having AirPods lose them down a drain. So he managed to retrieve them with a piece of wire and gum. Oh, whoa, yeah. really? Yeah, that was a great scene, that story. You should read it. I actually saw someone do that, and I just, I felt nothing. Yeah. I you just felt nothing for their loss? Yeah, I was just like, mm, this is the world. This is yeah. the dark future. Man, we are a grim group today. No, we're not grim. Like, <laughs> this dude just lost, and he just, just one of them, mm. down the, the sewer grate, oh. and I was just like... Oh, gravity, huh? You know? <laughs> what are you going to do? Audio yeah. sharing. Audio sharing between oh, that's devices. Cool. We've all had the time we want to share a movie or song with a friend. Yeah, now you can it. just, you just a tap. Back, like, just got the splitter and you just, like, listen in. AirPods right. now no, no, no more of that. No more of that. So and wait. when one of you laughs too vi viciously at whatever you're watching yeah. and it just pulls no out. Long, no whiplash yeah. anymore. No more tethering to your loved ones. I kind of like that share audio concept, like, especially like on an airplane. Yeah. Like, you can't have technically like two Bluetooth devices on an I iPhone. Yeah. Right. And they have no headphone jack, so you got to bring out the dongle. It's smart. Look, what did I say? They should just name this, rename this quality of life. 2019. <laughs> I don't know. They, it's they, good. They, they, yeah. re, they renamed it Dub Dub. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Can mm. someone explain that to me? Uh, I think Dub is just short for W. Yes. What? That's yeah. why the Warriors are Dub Nation. I don't know if they're the Golden State Warriors, but they are. What? Dub. I know. I know. You're disappointed. I thought it was a reference to dubstep. No. <laughs> oh, that'd be like wop wop. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. This is very, it is, very confusing to me. It's W. I know. I know. You're disappointed. You're disappointed. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Siri wow. Su Siri supports uh, 100,000 radio stations from around the world, so I guess you could ask Siri to play a radio station, which is great. What does 90% CarPlay availability mean? I think that means on 90% of vehicles you can get CarPlay. Really? Is that true? New vehicles? Yeah, New so, cars. Yes. Yeah. When it comes not to... your terrible old car. No, not, we... my, not my 87 Dodge Omni. I know <laughs> that. But... Yeah, they're not like outfitting old cars. No, I That'd realize that. Like, okay, but yeah. I just kind of refuse to believe that it's 90% yeah, of new between, cars. At this point, you should read the, the Roadshow. Com. What is, is it? Theroadshow.com. Okay. It's from CNET. Yeah. Uh, they cover cars. Okay. And they 
the amount of cars that have CarPlay and Android Auto is like every single one at this so point. So they it's, have both. Is yeah. it available That's in cool. the Dub Dubs? I don't know. No, it's Probably. just one dub. I was making a joke oh, about Dub Dub okay. and VWs. I thought you just didn't understand no. the concept. Okay. I'd still, it's still blowing my mind. <laughs> right, let's, you'll learn. You'll hear from I was while. waiting for Skrillex to come out. No, I thought it was a no. whole thing with a neon. He and the has neon. no place here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, this is... Going on. CarPlay, 90% of cars sold in the U.S. So okay. Maybe hey, that's... that's great. That's really cool. All right. So we're now on to Siri shortcuts. This is supposed to be the way that apps can talk to Siri and use, they can actually talk together with Apple devices too. So it's supposed to be a great thing. I, again, I have not seen a ton of apps take advantage of it. Mm. So I'm curious what they're, what they're going to do to get developers to use it in any meaningful way. But I mean, it was, it was just launched last year, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, does it take a while for it to kind of tick over for developers? Are they, no, they're not called dubs. The dub is the W. They're yes. called the devs. Again, okay. yeah. again. The devs. Any questions you have? <laughs> Once again, just, Claire, it wasn't complicated. There's it's no just, stupid questions. Yeah, just ask. Just stupid people. Um, <laughs> oh, I so, so it takes a while for the developers to kind of just stick it over and just start using it and integrate it into more apps. So sure. maybe that's why we haven't seen much of it. Yeah, I mean, like, this is, you know, essentially a, a laying out of a, a, of a groundwork mm. sort of thing where it's like these are the tools, yeah. have at it kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but it's cool. I mean, so far I, I'm kind of impressed with everything. I think, yeah. you know, they're kind of delivering a compelling, you know, set of tools. I yeah. do not agree with you at all. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'm waiting for them to pull out the hardware at some point. I know it's not every year. It's been two <laughs> years. There should be something. You're just sitting here eating popcorn, waiting for the There's, good stuff to happen. It's got to be something because I'm look. iOS 13 looks cool. Sounds, sounds like it's going to be fun, but not showing off anything that's. I. For me, it's the privacy stuff. Privacy mm. stuff. And I kind of always forget about that with Apple. And I think they, uh, I think they, they really like uh, delivered it here. But we'll see. I believe they're, sh they're showing off. Or this is a yeah neural. TTS. Yeah, neural tech to speech. I think it is, yes. which is a voice that's entirely software created, and they're doing a comparison between iOS 12 and iOS 13. This is, I guess, kind of similar to what we heard with Google Duplex, right? Where it was right. like hearing a voice that sounds more natural, that's being completely artificially created, and yeah. oh, we're entering the era of deep fakes. That's kind of cool. So something that doesn't sound so, hello, I've chosen a song for you, Ayaz, and I think you're going to enjoy this one. Do you think I could be a good Siri? I think you could be a decent one. Maybe or a uh, surrogate? For, maybe for a uh, surrogate for airports. You could be the lady at the airport. I could be an airport lady. Great. Yeah. You, could, you could maybe Park announce what a future. when the subway doors open. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Oh, she's already nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I took a listen to the, t the two back to back. The yeah. iOS 12 version, the iOS 13. Yeah, it sounds a little bit better, but it's nowhere near like duplex level yeah. of what? That's uh, a that's um, a robot? Um, no. uh, yeah, that's, I just want to. Table for four at uh Yeah, unless this robot stutters, uh, yeah. yeah. We're what, gonna have a hard time believing it. It's like then the, the next version of Duplex will just be Jeff Goldblum. All right. Just lots of stuttering. God, no, like, <laughs> I know. Hot <laughs> <laughs> flash is here. Um, we're up to iPad now, so okay, this is this where I'm gonna your cursor. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Cursor. It's gonna happen. Like I've I've heard what do you about um, well, I'll take my five dollar dues back. What did I bet that well, on again? Is is that worth the same as five dollars? I don't even remember what we were gambling on. So we we're gambling. This has all been a rich tapestry of lost time. You need to write this stuff down. Okay, well, we'll reset the deck here. Yeah, so five dollars. Wasn't that the oh, Mac whoa. Pro? Whether it's coming or not. Australian? Oh, right. Or? That's what it was. Mac Pro. What's worth more? Oh, like the Australian dollar is tanking right is now. Is it? So okay. if you can give me American, that's not dollar dues anymore. If you can just give me dollar dues. Yeah, dollar dues. What is? What do you, you know? Is it just like a dollar? Is that it's what? an Australian dollar. But they don't. Why do you have so many unnecessary syllables? I don't because always add a syllable. Just dollar a do. Dollary do. Dollary do. Yeah. Have you, you ever watched The Simpsons? I mean, it's becoming apparent. Wait, it time out. Been. Don't act like The Simpsons is like the the Australian ambassador no, but show. Like, like, that's where I've heard it. I'm like, that can't be real. But apparently, it is. Well, I mean, like in Canada, there's like loonies and toonies. I mean, we don't. We call them dollar dudes after The Simpsons. Okay. But, oh. Yeah. There is a lot of context I'm missing. <laughs> Cultural out on here. touchstone. Yeah. Come on, Joe. Right. So we, All got, right. So iPad OS so is far, a new introduction. I'm excited about this because I've heard rumors of like new ways of multi-window, maybe even a new home screen mm -hmm. where you yeah. actually use it like a computer. I, no I, way. I, I know. Turning the iPad into some sort of 
Microsoft I want them device. to go back to the Xbox controller. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's do it. I want to play games on my iPad in my house when I'm not in front of a TV. Yeah. Hmm. Will that be supported? Well, I guess we'll find that out. Yeah, well, if iOS... that's, I, there's so many things you can do. Already? Now. Yeah, I think they just announced that like in the last couple of months. But I mean, you could care. They had uh, for a while for iOS, not for iPads, those ridiculous controller attachments that could go on each side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're beyond that. That was not good. iPad OS. Yeah, so we're getting... Um, oh, it's separate now. Yeah, multi, multi, multitasking. That was the word I was looking for. Um, so dragging your messages app over from the right-hand side of the screen while you've got Safari open. Uh, you can pull your reminders up. So it's kind of this Windows-like functionality, not just having one app on the screen. Yeah, it's kind of wild. I mean, I don't know. My knee-jerk reaction is like, we are turning this into what closely resembles a laptop, but don't you call it a laptop. Right, but they have a closed app store to control that. They I also get have... It. I get it, but like this is, it is like amazing to me, for better or worse, this is not a, a, a line of criticism. This is more of just like their approach at this is, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, it, it makes sense at some point. Again, we're just getting like the sort of, you know, instant feedback of what they're trying to do, but like they are very much in, uh, vested in, in separating mm -hmm. these two operating systems. But the iPad is clearly going in another direction. Like, yeah. It's kind well, of Well, we're wild. seeing split view, which gives you multi-window options. Mm -hmm. So you can have two notes side by side. Um, so I guess the ability to have like one thing and then drag and drop text and other. things from one to the other. So this is, I guess, especially for iPad Pro, these are functionalities that should be in that kind of Pro device. If you're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars... On your on your device, and yeah. you want it to be something that you can kind of you take on the plane, watch a movie, and then do some work. I think that's the kind of functionality that it's been missing. Widgets on the home screen. There we go. This is much more like actually old Mac OS ten had widgets. I remember that? I used to love those, man. Confabulator, I think that was one of them. No, not Confabulator. What was the one that was? I know what you're out. talking about. It was yeah. something like that. But yeah, so this is this is very interesting because making an iPad Pro into a full-fledged computer at some point doesn't seem like it'd be that difficult. It's just I like, can't see them not saying something about a mouse any second. I mean, I mean, they're basically. I saw the note about add mouse cursor support is basically a laptop. They did not say that yet. They're lining it up. Mm. If they don't, it just this multi-window. He's he's dragging with his fingers. He's got multiple Word docs up next to each other. Create it so that you've got mail and then another of the same app mm -hmm. up on the screen. I mean, I mean, Dan made a good point. He's like, the second you add that, like you just said, like then it's a laptop. Almost. I mean, the thing is, the way you, the file organization is still a right. Little it bit doesn't weird. have like. Oh, do they have file manager they on do, your iPad? They, they do, do have right? a. They do have a files app for yeah. that, but it's not necessarily as powerful as Finder, where you can actually go in and do things. Right. So it's a very locked down machine, and theoretically, it's. I don't want to say, it's not idiot proof, but it's pretty hard to screw up an iPad, right? Yes. It's very hard. You can you're not going to accidentally delete some sort of system file. Yeah, and that's then, very unlikely yeah. that you're going to do that. I mean, I have a pro. I use it for drawing, and, and I love it. And But I, but it, there is that you know, thought process in my head where I'm going out for whatever, the, whatever I'm doing, and I'm just like, no, I, I can't take the iPad. Mm. It's just not going to do that extra step. Yeah. So I am very much vested in... The mouse stuff okay. as you are. I, I was like I was I was kind of hiding it. it and I wanted to like celebrate with you if and yeah. when they announced it. Okay. But I don't know. Well can we do a high five? Yeah, How much if, is that gonna screw with the audio? If it a lot. Brian will hate us. We do um, very softly. Very quiet high fives. All right, I feel it. Okay, so this All new right, so iCloud. So they're updating that files app, it looks like. Oh good. Columns apps and uh, column views, that is, excuse me iCloud Drive folder sharing, that's good, that's nice. Man, this yeah. is a lot of information. But are they They're also... devs, man, they love this no, stuff. No, I, I get it. They've well, this had is... 17 cups of coffee already. Ah, <laughs> uh, what's this, what's this? Support for US dr USB drives and SD cards. Wow. Sticking out it like that. Yes. Okay. The, you can hear what he's saying. He's like, this is so close to a laptop. So close. Well, I mean, the thing about an iPad. This is the iPad I wanted ten years ago, Federighi. 
Where were you and your beautiful hair back then? See, so the, I think one of the hardest things about iPad in general is just teaching everybody all the swipes and gestures. Yeah. And how do you bring two to three windows up at one time? How do you split them? How do you have three quarters one side? Like, it, that's a lot of education. Because but when they, you know what? CNET has so many good articles on that true. stuff. We have literally every article for every possible gesture. Because they've added in short, mm. little, uh, little by little, they move on and add these features. Because if they gave it to you all at once, like Windows uh, 8 did, they're like, hey, here's this brand new thing. And I was like, what is this? Yeah. But Apple does this so slowly and so deliberately that you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do this swipe here, this swipe here, and this swipe here. This is, this is completely normal for some reason. Like, I'm just thinking, okay, I just click this app and it opens. That's, mm. and I can move a window here. Yeah. That's a lot of education. And they've done it over the span of I don't know how many years. But by adding all of this, local storage, the zip and zip, like these are features that people they could finally understand at this point. Because they're yeah. like, who wants a compressed file on their iPad when the first one's out? And like, what, what's Can up? they finally understand it, though, because all of the heavy lifting has been done by competitors who are like, okay, so you use Zip and Unzip on this other device. Mm -hmm. Now it's coming to iPad. We don't have to train you on it because you know it, but it's a feature that should have been on iPad That's ages true. ago. There, there is, for the power users, they're like, oh, yeah, we know that feature should be there. But yeah. now they're We've been finally... using third-party apps like, you know, whatever file transfer protocol oh systems. Gosh, just... right. They didn't have a built-in compression thing for a while. You no, know, yeah. yeah. Uh, so they're talking about Safari, and now your iPad will be recognized as a desktop for Safari. Yeah. Desktop class browsing, yeah. All right, so it's... So we're 90% so we're have... of the way there. Come on, I feel it. Just teasing us. That if uh, the mouse stuff is like a one more thing. Yeah. yeah one no, more thing. not going to hold it. For this, for the, for the <laughs> iPad <laughs> section. For the whole thing. It's a micro one. Not going to have like a Mac Pro and then go at the end and be like, gonna... <laughs> and, the, and the mouse and the iPad. I just want to see now. like a giant Whoa. cursor show up like, shoom, and you're like, what? <laughs> and it's got the like glitter trail off it, like it's a GeoCities website. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Honestly, this, um, the ability for your iPad to read a USB, that is massive. It's great. Like, I think about all of the workarounds that I used to try and do to get that working yeah, in the past. Awful. You sort of. You had a MacGyver oh, this whole thing. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, so, it has a USB C, the new Pros, right? Yes, the iPad it does. Pro. So, and there's it's, USB C dongle. things, right? Yeah, it's USB C everything. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, like, do they make the they make the little ones that have that, right? Like the, oh, like the little flash drives. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, right? Yeah. They gotta be coming. I haven't seen them. You yet. just get a you just get an adapter. You get a little guy. Uh, it's another. Oh, it's another I know. Dongle. You just get a, No one's ever said that about an Apple product. You just get a little adapter. <laughs> well, it's a USB C <laughs> thing yeah. in general. Though. I, know. I mean, that's yeah. that's a larger issue, I think, uh, because like if you're gonna attach an SD card, okay. you still need an adapter. Swipe to undo. We just got it. So no it more happened. shaking. It happened. It happened. Yay. All right, Apple Pencil, this is his finally, so I don't know if we are going to get cursor support, but... He did mention that, that the iPad's going to... Oh, but maybe that's going to be a cursor. The iPad's getting 30 keyboard shortcuts. So if you're using it with a keyboard, you're going to be able to use it much more like a computer, which is a great idea. Yes. Yeah. Come on, I just feel it. I can feel it. Just... They're getting there. Just give it to me. It's we're happening. Okay, we're Look talking at that about cute Apple Pencil latency. Are they improving latency? What's happening? Yeah, so we previously... You guys can hear this. Don't forget, I can't hear this <laughs> thing. Yeah, you can. You can. Oh, sure. Oh. Okay, so we've moved from 20 millisecond latency down to 9 millisecond latency on the Apple Pencil. How do they do that? I mean, through Machine the guys. Learning look, I mean, the, 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 look at his like, hair. That is He's got a team amazing, of people with equally though. great hair. That's We're all better than twice as fast. Yeah. All right, so with iPad OS, we're getting some new Pencil features. Ah, and a Pencil Kit API so that third-party apps can have the same experience of that kind of beautiful pencil. Very cool. Up. I wonder if they can actually determine what the button does. Uh, I would think so. That would be nice. I would that would make so. a lot of sense. Like, what else? <laughs> like, you now get all 4,000 levels of sensitivity. It's like, no, we're holding those. 20 milliseconds. And if you guys draw at all, if you ever try to draw on a tablet, you've done this, right? The 20 to 9. I know you just mentioned it, but that is a huge difference. That's going to be massive. I mean, it's about... pretty damn good now. Yeah. Uh, and I love drawing on an iPad. I think that's like an amazing experience. I still have a hard time moving from a pencil and paper. But when I used when I used uh, the new iPad, I was like, okay, this is pretty good. Yeah, the new Pro. The older are... one, I didn't. Yeah, the old yeah. Pro, I wasn't the big fan of the latency. But okay, now I'm hearing the word cursor. Oh, what's uh, happening? What did you say about a cursor? Cursor, are you okay. here? This is like a seance. So you tap, and then... What are you move. learning? Okay. 
You've got a lovely guy on stage. Mm -hmm. Yes. With a nice plaid shirt. Okay, you can shrink. Oh, that's cool. You can shrink down your keyboard to have it as a, like a compact thing on the side of the screen. Adorable. Yeah. Absolutely adorable. Yeah. You're what can I use my damn mouse? Right. I mean, look, if it could handle USB I mean, uh, yeah. drives, I mean, it's basically, it basically has to be an oh, OS they level. can absolutely do it. It's whether or not it is a thing. Mm. They need to... Whether it's have, part of their bigger... Yeah, their bigger they have picture. 30 keyboard shortcuts. So if the keyboard is becoming more useful, why wouldn't a pointing device mm. exist? In, in you've got, well, I mean, that maybe you that's got what the one. pencil is. Maybe the pencil and your finger, and that's it, and you're screwed. And that's, yeah, what, that's so, what it is. I mean, we're seeing just a lot of shortboard, uh, shortboard, shortcuts for the screen, including the keyboard. So it's just sort of swiping. It's just showing some more gestures. Um, and Scott sign. These gestures for editing are fine, but you know what would be really nice? Trackpad support on iPad. Scott, we're all here with you, well, just waiting. He's man of, he's Just man waiting of the for the fun part. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, when you're editing text, it's a real pain to go, okay, put the finger here. Yes, it's yeah. garbage. Goes magnifying glass, you got to go over that it's way. Garbage. Okay, what about uh, editing photos? Like, trying to do all that with your fingers? Like, it's intuitive for some people, but not everybody. I think, yeah. I, I, I agree. If you're doing that on an iPad, you might be using the pencil. Mm. Yeah. So True. I think that's fine. Um, but that makes sense for photos. It doesn't what about, make sense for text. Yeah, editing video. I would use a lot of cursor sure. work, mouse sure. work. As someone who tried to, who want, once went to a trade show, the set, Apple mentioned Computex in Taipei, and shot videos entirely on my phone and edited them entirely on my phone and stayed up till like two or three in the oh, morning man. going insane. That was, that was, a, that was the bad place. Nothing like taking clips and you're like, okay, I'm going to move yeah. over oh, here, oh. here. Oh, no. Uh, too big. Can I just type uh, in uh, the uh, time uh, code? No, this. No, no, no. It's supposed to be easier that way. Remember that. The, the tools they gave us are supposed to be easier that way. Okay. The video editing that we're doing, we're doing it wrong. Well, I, I knew I was doing it wrong. Yeah. There was something definitely very clear there. That would work as a slogan for them, too. You're do, you've, you've been doing it wrong. <laughs> You're doing That's the whole thing. Like, if you just forget everything you know, this is great. Yeah. Mm. That's one of the biggest problems, I think. It's like they do, Apple, at sometimes, they do need that refresh point where they're like, okay, look, you know, this, this is the way stuff used to be. We're not doing that anymore. Mm. They've done that before with the OS X. They're like, okay, but you had PowerPC? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've drawn a line in the sand. Big fan of that. Okay. So we've kind of just gotten a whole bunch of pencil demonstrations, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't think we saw trackpad support there because we're back to Tim Cook. Uh, well, well, what is this the one? dream was fun. Maybe Tim gets to announce it. Well, let me. I, uh, they're showing some some writing here on the stream. Yeah, I wonder if so we could really get a get a sense of that low latency pencil. Yeah, it's it's always hard with these demos because you just you kind of just see it and you got the lag from the kind of the the demo iPad on the yeah. table up yeah. to the screen. You're right. It's impossible. The lag from us watching back here. It's tough. I'm excited. I have an iPad, All so right. this excites me. We're up to Mac, everybody. And I'm done. <laughs> See, guys, this I'm interested in. Mac OS, I've, I've always found it incredibly stable in general. It's good. It's except, good OS. Except for like the big jumps, you know, the long, long time. Right, ago. right, right. Uh, it's, it's very mature. And this is another thing. Like, is Apple still developing properly for this? Because the amount of effort that goes in iOS and now iPad OS, the fact that they're, they're distinguished from each other is a whole other thing we should talk about at some point. But Mac OS kind of gets short, the short shrift. It's like, okay, man, it runs on MacBooks and Mac Pros and iMacs. That who buys these? Mm. MacBook Pros are obviously very, very popular. So are MacBook Airs. So getting cool features that we see all over, like the iOS stuff and the iPad OS. Be interesting to see what they actually bring to Mac OS because it's mm. kind of, you know, they added the dark mode last year. And people love that. They're like, it's, it's great, yay! So let's see what they have in store this time. All right. Oh, the stage is going dark. Tim and his shiny white sneakers are running off, and we are getting a preview. I'm telling you, the pro. Come on. Oh, I see a circle. Oh, it's technically an arc. Look at that. What yep. Is, what are we seeing? We're seeing. We're seeing, we're seeing shapes. It's 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 their first. It's a first, lot of lines. It's their first. That looks like a stand. Is the Mac Pro? I'm behind. I don't know how you guys are getting that. It's, we're seeing it's a hinge. Shapes. We're seeing grills. Everybody, oh. we're seeing the light. 
All right, let, let's, let's see. We're what's seeing, happening. we're watching this live. This, you're getting this before it's really happening. It's dark now. It's dark. Dan Ackerman saying, let's be honest, this is what we all oh, came okay. here for. It's the pro. It's the is new that, pro. Oh, and it's Who? a cheese grater. Cheese grater. What did I say? I said, I guarantee. Huh? Five huh? dollar dues. And five uh, dickery dues. <laughs> five <laughs> dickery dues coming your way, because those aren't real. It's a box. Okay, I want Very quiet high five. <gasps> Very quiet high five. Wow. I told you. Okay. It Stick is. with me. Stick with the Apple expert, Jeff Bacalar. The Apple Pro. <laughs> this is the new Mac Pro, and it's incredible, says Tim Cook. Well, and it has Swiss never looked cheese, more... Swiss cheese, Parmesan <laughs> cheese, any kind of cheese you can want. Fresh mozzarella. You got a cheese, you got a computer. <laughs> it runs on cheese. <laughs> okay, it does have the return of the two massive handles on the top, it looks like, it which is great. It looks so much like a cheese grater. It looks so... Wait, is there also a new display with it? I thought... And this could be the 6K display that, that we, we potentially heard about. That was something alongside. Okay, so I ha finally have a picture. You guys have it up there, too. Oh, boy. Is it, is it purple, or is that just a color balance I don't know, thing? but I'm going I'm no, to be the first silver. to say it's this. it's that kind yeah. of... Uh, internet. This thing's dead sexy. <laughs> okay? okay. I'm curious. I like it. I oh, want to I wanna get to know it. I thought that was a render, what we were just seeing. No. I, was I thought they'd brought up a joke cheese grater on stage and put that al alongside as a little nod to the past. It's the real thing. Here we go. They said, modularity and flexibility, says the giant slide. It's like, yes, there's a good idea. Yeah, imagine. Ooh. He's like, we're actually going to let you open this thing up and put more RAM in it. And what it's got the idea? latest in handle technology. We've got a big close-up of the handle there. It's so. very important. You can know. carry it down to the discotheque with you on a Saturday evening. I don't know, about those, I don't know about those feet. Why did they put feet on it? It's cool. Okay. This is cool. cool. Uh, you don't think this is cool? No, I mean, you, they used to have a symmetrical design. so they It's going to walk. <laughs> That's why. No, I, I, I mean, like, oh. as someone who, uh, you know, came up in this world where, like, I, I really don't do video editing anymore, mm -hmm. but there is a part of me from the late 90s to early 2000s that's just like gushing right now yeah. because this is such an important thing and i i said look, they got to they got to revisit that 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 and cultivate that creative subset of people that were convinced apple turned their backs okay. on and now they're reeling it back in. They're showing the inside. And they're showing you that there is a computer in there. It's not computer. just cheese. You can actually open it's it up. It's not just the shavings of various forms of cheese. All right, so we've got 300 watts of power, six memory channels, 12 DIMM slots, and up to 1.5 terabytes of system memory. And a memory? Yeah, yes. up to 28 core Intel Xeon. So, all right, now we're talking about expansion. So. Holy crap. That's just a... Wait, I've never heard of that. That much RAM? Damn. That sounds... <laughs> Damn, that's some RAM. <laughs> Look at this, they're actually using like standard. It's not like it's their own Apple-based product. Yeah, they didn't yeah. like invent a, a process. Oh, so okay, we thing. figured it out. What we're going to do is... We're okay, gonna... eight PCIe slots and four double-wide slots. I mean, this thing's a monster. Three single-wide slots. You could, you could build a 20K machine here. You could probably fit the old Mac Pro in this, I hope. I okay. should be this card large. With it two Thunderbolt 3 ports, two USB-A ports, and a 3.5 mil audio mini jack. This Just thing, for the kids. This thing could be, I mean, this is pretty filthy. Two built-in 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. Okay, graphics. That's going to be the big thing. Yeah, I wonder what they're using for that. Okay. Trying to catch up here. I still don't know about this display. Is that from Apple or is that just this? We'll get there. Don't worry. I mean, it looks pretty, so. I don't know it. What's this guy? I don't know it. Eight? Okay. I see this. What is this? Oh, no. We're, 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 uh, Claire already talked about All the right. PCI. So. Yeah, so we've got the PCIe. Man. Okay, so they're talking about integrating Thunderbolt through that. Thunderbolt throughout the entire system. I mean, that was the whole issue with the previous generation. Oh, okay. All right, so a huge heat sink that's quietly cooled by the Mac Pro cooling system. All right, so it's an architecture called the MPX module. That would be cool if we got like a water cooled Mac Pro. All right, so graphics, they're talking Radeon Pro 580X. Okay. All right. Very intrigued with this. It's like we all got, I get very quiet about this. Like, don't screw yeah, this up. I, know. I just want one. 
this is this feels like the uh, the exciting stuff that the real the real geeks are nerding out yeah, over right now. Yeah, I want one of these. Would not be able to even scrape the surface I'm in very, terms of what this is capable. of. I'm so yeah. curious what this is going to cost. Yeah, that's. Well, I'm sure. It's, well, like the baseline, right? Like right. if you max it out, price. this is a twenty thousand. All right, they say it's the world's most powerful graphics card. It's interesting, yeah, because we see so much around graphics cards and PCs and stuff coming out of Computex. It's really interesting that we're seeing this coming just a week later. So, let's see what a Mac Pro costs right now. The old one. I'm gonna check this out because yeah, it was it starts um, off at two thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, so about three thousand for the old cost. Starts. At so, okay. the Radeon Pro, so it can handle two of those cards, right? So you can pop, so you can, I guess, you know, what is the Radeon equivalent of like SLI? I think it's called like Crossfire or something, right? Yeah, something like that. Um, it's cool. Super power, capable of a lot of really intense graphic processing. I think, I think we're seeing a lot with, I don't know whether we're seeing this across the board, but a lot of devices now are kind of going... Retro modern, you know, we're seeing that nod back to older styles and designs. It feels like everyone's just a hipster like who wants to just to see something that's not necessarily new and sleek. The mm. old Mac Pro really felt like something that was trying to be futuristic and ahead of its time, mm -hmm. whereas this is being futuristic whilst giving a bit of a nod to the, the people might have grown up on the original, um, the original Mac Pro. I do think this is much uglier I would say, <laughs> than the old Mac Pro. I thought the cheese grater was not pretty, but this new one looks... Pretty ugly. It, I think brutal is the word for it. Yeah. I, and I actually, I actually believe that's a, a style too. That's a brutal style. This is very, it's very odd, I guess, but there's also no disc, disc tray on the front. That's mm. another old nod that yeah. used to have, like, yeah, Blu ray drive or yeah. something. There's no drives on this thing, as far as I can tell. So, what did you say the, um, the Trash Can Mac Pro started at? It starts at about 3000 Okay. 4900 in Australia. <laughs> Love that Australia tax. Okay, 1.4 kilowatt power supply. So that got a bit of a cheer from the crowd. I mean, that's... that's it feels really... like they're playing to the dev crowd here. This is where... Yeah, I mean, this is... It's funny, like, this thing could run games real well. Wow, without, 300... Without the, without the Mac OS part. Right, I was like, <laughs> how? All right, or they're saying it's as quiet as an iMac Pro with 300 cubic feet of airflow. I missed some of that, but that's, um, so they're I talking mean, about the cooling system. There's three massive fans yeah. that turn hot air into cold air, huh. which, it's a cheese grater. Look at that. It's wild. It's like, a little alien eyes. You see this thing, of course. Optional wheels. Yeah, that's what? cool. No, that's cool. What do you Optional mean? Optional wheels. Oh no, it's not like <laughs> Rosie from the Jetsons. It's why, gonna... why would you do that? Why not? Because you, you need to. You need to you wheel, to... yeah. It's gonna get it's you the a new drink. drinks trolley. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea. Freshen your drink with a four thousand dollar machine. That's just a guess right now. Yeah, it's great to have wheels. Okay. Uh, no, I'm into it. I as we're turning against you. Well, also I'm thinking if you have to like actually work on it, you <laughs> don't want to have to pull the thing. The last one weighed fifty pounds. I so mean, to do any work with it, you would either drag it. Or you would try to just turn it where I, it was. I just the wheels, get wheels. The wheels are important. I, I will say. They are. I just think just, about like over here, like you know, some of the other brands here. They're bringing stuff. This, this, this will is, be yeah. Like that. Just That'll something, be a thing. I mean, this is not really a. It's, a, it's not a, It's now. It's now a mobile product. Okay, because it can. <laughs> it can go. This is the Apple Car, everybody. Four <laughs> wheels. It's, it's all we wanted. It's got. <laughs> and now you've got. Now you've got Mac Pro kart racing. Uh huh. Well, Ian Sher, who's one of our reporters on the ground in San Jose, now you've the got... Mac Pro also has optional wheels. Can't wait for Mac Pro jousting. That's and where, more so dangerous. the pencils are your little jousting sticks. Ooh, people can be impaled, Claire. Well, you could use the first gen ones since they only work on the other nice. Pads, so. Yeah, yeah. Do okay. those. Those are disposable. Oh, I'm loving this. Showing some uh, brands, I guess, who are using Mac Pros. Is that what they're going for? I can't hear again. You guys can hear yeah. this. I can't. Is we're seeing, we're seeing. Oh, look, I, I got really into the jousting there, sure. so I won't lie to you. This is neat. This is neat. Okay. Maxon's bringing its render engine to Mac. All right. All right, so... And so pretty... they've got they've got partners. We're seeing partners like Autodesk, Pixar, 
Red, Otoy, Black Magic Design, Foundry. Adobe. I'm trying Adobe. to buy one. I'm trying to buy one. You're now. in the store now? I'm at the store. It's not on the store yet. No, it's not. It, it is. Not. It is? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the old macros there. The old toilet. Oh, they're gonna one. show they're gonna show Final Cut with the, mm, and like, that's when I start to tap you know, the brakes. Well, no, I actually, I, I've, I've watched a couple of videos about the performance of, that's definitely an Apple monitor, by the way. The back of it matches the iMac. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's new. I don't know what that is. We're going to see that soon, hopefully, uh, because we're showing off Final Cut. But Final Cut's supposed to be really, really tailored to Mac OS, so it's supposed to be able to render quicker because it actually works better with the software. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But uh, I again, don't think people abandoned Final Cut because of its processing power. I think yeah. people just kind of got sick of the functionality of it. Yeah, so the back of these monitors are definitely a huge tell. Hopefully, yeah, I'm hopefully. Trying, to get a, trying to get a shot. Those yeah, because I've got yeah. that similar... Greater look. Well, bare grills, huh? <laughs> All right, I keep on, keep on getting to... I was showing Logic Pro right Logic now. Logic Pro? Yeah, that All right, so good. they're just showing... Okay, let's, let's just throw a 100-piece orchestra, and yeah, let's throw in another orchestra at the same time so we can just have all of this Man, working on the same it's machine. It's cool. cool. And he's saying that, like, to be able to run these massive orchestral libraries in the past... You'd have to uh, you'd have to have multiple computers working on them. Right, they're using one Mac Pro, and they're calling it the Mac Pro. They didn't change the name or anything. Yeah. So that's, that's good. What are they going to do with all those trash cans? Probably oh wow, way. that's amazing! A thousand audio tracks in wow. Logic Pro. That's wild. Which I mean. You want to talk about Skrillex, that's what Skrillex yeah. sounds like. A thousand audio tracks. Just the brown note. All playing at once. <laughs> this is a really interesting this demo is, to show it off. Yeah. Like, okay, we're going to play tons and tons of audio at one time. It's cool. It's, like, it's effective, I mean. And it shouldn't stutter. Although it could be uh, completely lying. It's just a video. And behind it is like a little, <laughs> there's an iPad playing it, like music. This right. is wild. Look at him just like scroll through this whole insane timeline. It's neat. That is really and neat. And so now we're going into Final Cut Pro and we've got a video that's shot in HDR. So we're... It would be nice if like, okay, so now we have this machine, we're going to fix Final Cut back. <laughs> we're going back to 7. Yeah, we're sorry about that. It was, yeah, we, we, we know everyone left at X and now it's yeah. just 7 again. There we go. Welcome back. They're showing... Raw video of 8K of gazelles and bugs and leaves. It's very exciting. That is exciting. I want to know about this display, though. Yeah. This thing is just... What do you think? It's an OLED? Wow, that's amazing. They're, they're not having to wait to render. They're putting advanced color correction and lens flare onto the video. In real time? Just in real time oh, without having to huge. render it out. And guys, if you, don't, if you don't do a lot of video editing, <laughs> that <laughs> does take a long time. And I feel like I can hear all the CNET video editors uh, just quietly weeping. Giggling. Because I've just had, you know, our editor Ian in Australia will just send something to render overnight. It comes back. It's sort of bugged out. He's like, well, I'm going to have to start that again. Yes. So this is... This is the kind of capability that is really massive. Yes, but can we afford them? <laughs> we'll see about that because this. I am terrified of how much. I mean, look, there's always an Apple tax you pay, an Apple premium. Um, I'm curious to see what. Mm. I mean, look, like you can still build this too, you know, if you had to. Okay, so what do you think? Over or under starting price well, of three thousand. Because 3,000 oh, is the base right now. I think over. Okay, so I'm going to say, I, I think I'm going to stick to 3,000. Okay. Because it's, or 2,999, because it's a little sure. bit more palatable. Because right. you're going to start off with, like, the, the bad one, which everyone that would be. And you, you will be We're able to match. We're about to hear more, um, about to hear more about the display. Good, because that thing is making me very It's a interested. little thicker than I thought. It looks yeah. like it's, like, an inch thick. Would you imagine that? Maybe they actually put... Well, they, didn't worry, they didn't worry about thinness. They're like, no, we want to make a great one. No, we just want it to be good. But there's not a, slide through a sewer grate. <laughs> there's, not, there's not a lot of um, bezel on that monitor either. Yeah. Is it 27, larger than 27-inch screen? Oh, this is their wish list. Yeah, so we've got a wish list. 
and they're talking about one of the big things that people request is high dynamic range. Oh, do you guys know what it is? It's a way to bring content to life. Is this, so they're talking about the monitor. Yes. So yeah, we're talking monitor town right now. And so we are seeing a comparison of non-HDR with regular HDR. Right. And saying more and more devices have HDR now. I mean, it makes sense. That's kind of been a thing that a lot of PC monitors mm -hmm. have been lacking. Huh. You, you can get an HDR monitor, but they're not, you know, kind of widespread. But again, like that's what Apple does. It's just, there's no fragmentation really. It's just... This is it. Yeah, okay, so we're name checking. We've got a Sony monitor on screen saying, like, here's a wish list of things, and it's missing a couple of other features, and it goes for $43,000. It's yeah. not very often you get Apple is, is name that checking fair, compared to the brand. Is that a fair comparison, though? Well, they're isn't claiming that, that that's how good this thing's going to be. Right, but isn't, aren't, isn't it comparing it to, like, an actual, like, studio monitor, sort of like, I don't know. It's tough, again, I can't hear what they're saying, but yeah. that is a little of a bit of a reach, maybe. Well, I'm also curious who, who's providing the panel for them, because Apple does not make displays. A Retina 6K display. It is a 6K. That room so, was too. This might looks be a, like we've seen it. It's probably a Samsung. Or do you think this is an LG? Hmm. Because they don't, Apple does not make their own displays. Like their phones use Samsung. Yeah, I don't know where the text so is. So this is right. a very... 40% larger than the iMac display. Okay, that's, so it, I mean, it's massive. It's also very squared off compared mm -hmm. to what we've seen in the past, the sort of beveled edges. Like if you see, this looks very like just angular. A, it's just it's very a industrial. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's very minimal. It's, it's very... the most steampunk uh, Apple monitor. Yeah, like we, it just feels like a massive shift in design. So I we're like talking it. design now. I think it's cool if That'd... you're just going by what it looks like. Mm. I like it. That'd be very interesting. This is a hint for what we're going to be seeing from other devices because mm. yeah, that is, it is very different. It's cool. Yeah, I feel like... They have an anti-reflective coating on it, which is good. That means you're not having a super shiny mess. All right. And maybe we can bring up, I've just um, flicked the, the front, the back, and the sides, a, a shot of that, so if we can linger yeah, on it. Get my... Yeah, Because that's, we've got that same grill backing. Okay. So I'm going to, let's see, is that actually on the R side of it? No, it's not. Talking to myself. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, Brian, I'm going to put a different window up so you can see the what this Claire got. And so, yeah, we're talking HDR now. All right, so if you go to my All screen, right. you can get a nice shot of the, the side, the back, the front. It definitely has that same design on the back. They say how much it weighs? I have not heard that yet. No, I haven't heard that. We're talking display now, so we've got a massive array of blue LEDs to give that brightness. So this is their new monitor, huh? That's pretty sick. The design's obviously, I mean, it's perfectly matched to the Mac Pro in style when it comes to that circular design on the back. Like Claire was saying, it's very squared off. Yeah. And the sides, it's got a very interesting hinge mechanism on I can get that. Thing. And so the that backing in those grills, you can say see. Okay, so they're saying one thousand nits of full screen brightness indefinitely, and that's because the back grill acts as a heat sink to to reduce the heat, so it doubles the surface area. So, okay, that kind of generates that massive brightness. And so then they're talking about that as a sort of a, a capability with HDR. So, I mean. I suppose it makes sense if you have this really beautiful Mac Pro, you don't want to put it on a gummy old screen. No, of course not. You don't not. want all that capability. And also, if you can upsell people, you buy in the Mac Pro, let's get you a new screen as well. <laughs> yeah, well, they yeah. kind of, that's always been the case. With that like thing's the at least they... two grand. That's right. just the monitor guess. itself. Yeah. There's got to be. That's my guess on You're going to play high or lower? Two grand. We've got two grand over I, here. I, what are you going for, Bacala? I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, HDR monitors on the other side of the fence. And remember, it's got a one million to one contrast ratio. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're, I mean, and the, and the ones I'm thinking of are maybe 4K at the most, so I can't see this being cheaper than. than All right, it's called the Pro Display XDR because it's not just high dynamic range, it's extreme dynamic range. It is. And it wouldn't, it. it wouldn't be Apple if we didn't have an entirely new term for something, so. Oh, no, sure. Pro I Display XDR. They were never that, but now that's all they do. Mm. Add, add in consonants where they can. Uh, you sure it's not 10DR? <laughs> nice. 
Oh no. Did someone say the letter X? It really is extreme dynamic range, that's what they said? Yeah, because that's not real. You can put six displays side by side, if you have moon money, I'm assuming, but if yes. you're some sort of moon money millionaire, 120 million pixels, we've got the exec screaming on stage, pretty psyched. Six displays side by side. Who's having six displays? Someone. Batman. <laughs> I don't know. Batman's a scientist. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay, now we're getting to design, talking about a counterbalanced arm that has like providing the tilt in the screen. And it's still super angular. Like we're, we're still talking. It's just such, such a departure from what I'm, I think of the yeah. iPhone as. Yeah, I mean, they. Whoa. What's, What's that? that? I'm sorry, this just in. Uh -huh. It rotates for portrait mode. Okay, good. We've yeah, officially of gone from the age. No longer are we shooting in landscape, everybody. It's all portrait mode. Well, that's also... It's the new era. No, for sure, but like it ditch better. <laughs> I mean, for what this is going to cost, it absolutely should. Yeah. Um, also, like coders like to, yeah, you know... Yeah, that's true. Work I was just way. thinking about TikTok users who want to see their oh, like, right, TikTok yeah. videos just in massive... Man, they really... They are not leaving out any detail. Yeah. Well, I suppose everyone's waited for so long. It has been a while. So we've got a 6K resolution, modular design, quiet operation. What else are they selling it on? Super wide viewing angle, reference modules, Thunderbolt connections. Let's see what else we got here. Everything. Extreme dynamic range, a million to one contrast ratio. Tells you you're pretty in the morning. It's fantastic. I mean, 32 inches. It's world's best pro display. That's what they're claiming. And with that, she's mic dropped. Just kidding. She's probably wearing a lav mic or a headset, so she can't mic that. Can't mic drop that. But um, I'm all trying right. to think of like anything that even comes close to it in terms of like consumer, consumer grade. With monitors? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, that's a, like a subject that people are really bored by at this point because there's been so much movement towards laptops at this point. Yeah. That people aren't buying like desktops very often. No, but uh, but I think people I. I I don't think that's a dead market. I just, you know, this is a serious, serious display. Mm -hmm. um, you know. All right, so we're doing your... a price comparison now, and they're saying okay. Here's starting. A, this is called rationalizing. We said, how okay. much are we betting before your streams catch up? How I, much are you going to pay for the Mac Pro? I said it was going to start at three thousand. Yeah, I can't see. <laughs> I, yeah, oh, I see it now. More. Yeah. Forty-five. Keep going. Uh, I, I saw it now. Six, six grand. Five nine nine nine. Available Damn. this fall. Yeah. I mean, and it's available in the fall. Yeah. It's, it's an autumnal computer. I want to see. Do the wheels come with it for five nine? <laughs> no, that's another grand. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> do I want to go to the store the and like see what All kind right. of so configuration we're, talking, we're looking at. And they're saying for that Sony monitor that they compared. All right, Pro Display, XDR. What are we saying, cost wise? We said two thousand. Two thousand. 35. <laughs> Way up. <laughs> 4999. Holy sh wow. Okay. Oh, and you have to pay for you the stand. You have to pay stand. for the stand? $999 for the stand. All right, this what? is but, guys, And the don't swivel dealy. Guys, this is not a consumer grade no. piece of machine. Right okay, here, so how okay? much? If you are buying six you're already alongside in 10K. each other, you're already in for 10K. Yeah. If That's you're it. getting six alongside each other, you're talking thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean you're already in for ten k. Well, no, that was oh for the uh, for just, just for the, the displays. Monitors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but this, you know what? Like, yes, that's this is not a machine. This is you're, this, you're not going on Facebook with this thing. I mean, you could. I mean, you're you'd, you're, you'd be a monster. It's gonna look great. Yeah. <laughs> controlling a moon landing with it. I mean, it is some serious hardware. Yeah. So this price. It's gonna be that. This is not, again, a consumer grade thing. Yeah, this yeah. is how much. This is what production companies will buy. Yeah. And, you know, like don't forget that. It's not for you. If you got the money, more it's power not to for you. you. But it's You're not, not for you. You're not allowed this. It's, this isn't gonna go in your room. This is okay? why you can't have nice so, things. Yeah, I mean, look, this is fine. If you want a super powerful machine, you can still build one. Yeah. I'm just curious what the base one. Has for right. for, uh, for specs because if you got doesn't have one point five terabytes of RAM. If you started for six thousand dollars, like you, I mean, Whew. obviously this is for, for professionals, and this was an, basically an oh, underserved. Okay. Was that? We're up to Mac OS. OS. Don't OS. know why I said that so weirdly. Mac OS Catalina. Nice. We're going oceany. It's got a bit of a like a cool dark feel, I guess, because of the dark mode in Mac OS. So, all Ooh. right. Interestingly enough, real quick, the starting at six grand, Apple says is 
up to $3,000 cheaper than a similar HP configuration. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So they are talking about iTunes. Yeah, the history of the store. They're showing us. Oh, is this bless. in memoriam? <laughs> it looks like it. It's got that. Remember old, when M and M was big? Remember the brushed metal oh. all over Mac. I mean OS X. It was a Mac OS then. This. National Treasure is the featured film. <laughs> what does it mean? Monkey well, brain explosion. Yeah, seriously. Oh, I they're told showing. You, there's patterns everywhere, yeah. man. There's patterns everywhere. You just everywhere. gotta be able to read between the lines. Yeah, I am the fourth figure in the brain explosion right now. Oh, what a trip they down They really are lane. going through every iPod or yeah. every iTunes thing. Okay, we get it. We know no. what you're doing. Can Federighi. iTunes do more? No. <laughs> he reckons it can. Can Federighi. iTunes do even more? That's what it, oh. Can iTunes be your Mac Pro? We're going to charge you $6,000 for iTunes now. Oh, okay. He's just suggested calendar in iTunes. And <laughs> everybody laughed. And I think he's serious. Mail in iTunes. Right. It, Wait, what? He's, he's obviously Safari making a point. Safari in iTunes. That there's he's, too much stuff in he's there. He's having a laugh. Mm. I think he's pulling our he, legs. This is, yes, look at that old ass screenshot. <laughs> All right, yeah, he's definitely taking the mickey. I he like said, it. let's add a doc to iTunes. Nailed yes, it. you've over engineered it. You've nailed it. Good job. Good job, Flow Man. I'd, yeah. like, I'd like the calendar in there. It should have a calendar so I could do more stuff with it. All right, the future of iTunes. It's not one app, but three. Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV. So they're going to break it out into three. And then iTunes itself evaporates. Yeah. Obi-Wan well, Kenobi graphic stuff. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, The yeah, graphic yeah. was like the reverse. It was right. one thing yeah. to three. Yeah. And it's just going to blow off into the wind. That's like it. the end of a film. Your, just like a sailor's funeral. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like... What's that? Like tears what I, in the rain. What That's it. For your iPhone, if you have to fix it. No, you don't have an iPhone. <laughs> if you have an iPhone to fix, right? Like I don't know how that works. <laughs> how does that work? Maybe that's, if you have an iPhone to fix. You cook it. I you, can't fix you it. Connect it. No, no, you connect it to the computer. I mean, sure. What opens up? iTunes used to do it. So, so now why? Maybe it's for the iPhone recovery tool. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It might be something very basic. iTunes, Scott okay, Stein. So saying, iTunes is it, gone. When you connect your phone to your computer, this is what you see. Nothing. Yeah, your computer just shuts down and says, you're on your own, Jeff. Okay, you can find it in the sidebar in Finder. So all those, like... If well, it actually it does say iPhone, Jeff's iPhone. That's Jeff's cool. iPhone, you can just... It's in Finder now. Yeah. Interesting. You pull it up. So yeah, that but, makes sense. Yeah. The way, oh, you mean the way, like, any device works in Windows? <laughs> where it, like, just shows up like a drive. You're spicy today. I'm not spicy. It's, it's just like, sure, okay, yeah. fine. Do it that way. Yeah, but we've always kind of known that about these sort of things. Yeah. It's kind of... It's okay. Yeah. No one's mad. Yeah. Well, you know, the spice is here, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's fine. I want to see what the podcast app looks... I mean, it looks pretty simple. I'm seeing it right now. It looks like iTunes, right? That's the other thing. It looks like a very flattened out iTunes. So the music player is going to be very similar too, I'd imagine. Like, I mean, now I kind of feel like this, does podcast need to be separated from music in general? Didn't it just be... Tunes? Yeah, they're not the same. They're just not. All right. So using, they're talking about the podcast app now, using machine learning to search the spoken content of a podcast so you can find it really easily. That'd be something. Yeah. That's cool. And now we're watching the that is TV neat. app. Oh, For All Mankind. There's a little plug. Okay. Purchase movies for iTunes as well as stuff from HBO, Showtime, Stars. And support for 4K HDR on the Mac. That's, that's pretty great. Though. Yep. You can watch it on that beautiful $6,000 monitor or $5,000 monitor. Yeah. You, oh, man, that's a lot of money. That's 5000 for the monitor, 1000 for the stand. I'm looking at my notes. I'm like, <laughs> that's the stand I and $1,000? Like, I'm like, I'm just going to leave it right here. Yeah. I'm not spending an extra $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I wasn't going all just for it. Just a series of cardboard tubes taped up to the back of your back. <laughs> You're like, why is that on a brick? It's like, eh, what are you going to do? Sidecar, what is this? Mm. Like, people are asking me on Twitter, like, that, okay, just to reiterate, like, the next Star Wars movie will be edited on that kind of machine, like, this is, again, not, not your, your home video. Mm. All right, and we just got confirmation that the iPad will work as a second display for your Mac. Cool. That's great. So you can spread across iPad and your MacBook. What happens when you drag your cursor to it, though? <laughs> it just disappears. It's just like, like ah. ah. <laughs> you got to touch. Don't mention the war. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's important because there's a lot of apps that do that right now, and they use right. a lot of It feels magic. like he's building. 
What's wired happening? and wirelessly, this capability of the all your favorite Mac apps. So I'm seeing stuff like Premiere and okay. After Effects. Uh, yep. I was trying to remember. I was like, pr a, a uh, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, Thank you. It looks like when you bring over the app from the Mac to the iPad, you can use your pencil as you would as if yep. it was a regular uh, Wacom, Wacom, Wacom tablet. Wacom, yep. That's pretty cool. That brings in a lot of functionality right away. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, there's a lot of apps that do this already. That they don't handle it as well. So this is going to be a very. It's going to tick off some developers that already were using this kind of thing. Yeah. But this will be, I think, very beneficial in general, just as a productivity tool. Absolutely. We're now getting some details about accessibility and the ability to control your Mac with entirely with your voice. Cool. We had that for years. Mm. I had that on a really old, really old Mac, and I'd be yelling, computer, do this. Computer, do that, and it's like, who are you talking to? <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, there's a mic, and I can talk to it. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, this doesn't really make. I could have just you know, opened the app myself, yeah, yeah. but no. Computer, go. I think, yeah, I think the um, ability to move across iPad and Mac, that's that's awesome. Because mm -hmm. I, if you say you take two devices with you, I think they showed someone like on the go being able to have. I don't know how lazy do you have to be, but just having your Mac up there and just being like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a cool going to a like, detailed mime here, but you follow what I mean. No, for sure. It's I think it's a cool uh, complimentary kind of thing. I just I feel like that that cursor trackpad piece is still missing. Maybe they're thinking of the iPad as you're the preaching trackpad. to the choir here. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you, but this is a decent kind of like you know next best. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So it's not one more thing; it's next best thing. Yeah. You're like <laughs> couldn't do everything you wanted, but here's the next, next best, best thing. thing. People are going to be like, why can't I just run Mac OS on my iPad? Yeah. Then? Why not? Yeah. I don't know what you say to those people. Yeah. You're just like, you're not wrong. You're, you make a lucid point. Yes. But, yeah, here we are. All right. So cool accessibility features. I think Apple has traditionally been pretty strong on accessibility, making, making their devices accessible and yep. user-friendly. For sure. So. All right. So it's using Siri voice recognition technology. Once again, we're getting that privacy message that your voice is processed on device. I don't know. They put the Mac Pro like in the middle of this, and then they're like, not how? How are you going to top that? Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, we got Mac OS, and we got a secondary display. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It seems like unless there's something even bigger at the end. Yeah, it does seem confusing because they're talking about finding friends. It's hard. Keynotes are hard. Keynotes are it's hard. It's hard to keynote, I would imagine. Yeah. So I mean, and if you have an amazing product, it shouldn't be. No, I, I know. Like it's literally, it's a, it's amazing. As in, like this is insane. This yeah. Is, this is, machine's crazy. This this monitor is crazy. And they're like, oh yeah, you can do find my friend on your. Yeah, they maybe, maybe they're trying to loop it back to something that's a bit more consumer friendly, rather it's than possible. like just ending on this thing that is just that no the one impossible. Can like, hey, here's the thing that you'll maybe. never have. I mean, iOS, I think, would be the most consumer-facing thing. I mean, yeah. Mac OS is good and everything, but more people have iPhones than they do Macs. Yeah. So, it's curious where they're going to go with this. Yeah. All right, where are, we, where are we now again? Still with privacy. Encryption well, yeah, we're talking about anonymity. find my device, find my friends, and once again, it's, um, it's encrypted and anonymous. And so, it's a... F okay, so from Scott, it's uh, find my is a combo device finding and friend finding Mac and iOS app finds devices when off a Bluetooth beacon. So it's an encrypted and anonymous app and yeah. I like, I mean, it seems weird to be finding friends with the same app that you're lose, using to find your lost device. Yeah, this, like, like where's my thing? thing yeah. yeah. Or maybe there's just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, it's a rebranding of find my iPhone and find my Mac, just getting rebranded as find my. I mean, it feels like there's a noun missing in that sentence. Yeah, it's sort of, Subject. you know, find my, yeah, <laughs> whatever it find is. Find my Peters out. Find my checks notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're seeing some more redesigned apps on Mac OS. You're right. It does feel like this is kind of, we've seen a big, beautiful thing. And now, oh, we've got some other stuff. Sorry, we, we, we kind of tacked this on at the end. I mean, they're not even Craig wanted it. to come on stage again. They're not even showing it running on that, that crazy monitor. They're like, here's some MacBooks. 
Like they're showing Mac OS. On, yeah. So I get it. I mean, it's supposed to be on on everything like that. I mean, on every Mac, but it's just, uh, just why? <laughs> why? I feel so, like there's so there's so much more to that Mac Pro okay. I want to know. Yeah. Um, but we'll find out. Plus, we got a couple. Here months. we go. This Project is um, Catalyst. Project Catalyst is the other name for macrame. What's the word? Mojave, and it's kind of mar marzipan. I was like, it's, it's kind of marzipan. Oh, it's kind of marzipan. <laughs> it's not like yeah, yeah, um, we lost it. I'm like, what? So Project Catalyst is is, is the ability to port apps across iOS and Mac OS. So this is what we've been hearing about. So. So that is a uh, so it is essentially uh, a a product, right? That like it ports the software. Yeah. So it's the new name for iPad to Mac app porting. So they're saying, devs, you're already probably using this, but now it way, has yeah. a pretty new name. Cool. Neat. This is gonna be very right. interesting because I want hopefully right now or coming up soon we'll see. Frederigi bring out developers who have already used these tools to come up with new apps that yeah. run on everything and how or what customizations have been done or how easy it is to make an app run on iOS, iPad OS, and Mac OS at the yeah. same time. Yeah, well they're saying that Catalyst will be available from today, so all right. Mouse input cursor. This is but this is it sounds like this is you care about that because the app would go the other way, right? Yeah. Custom menu bars, icons, context menus, hover events, which I've misread as horror events. Yeah. So hover events. No, that's their turn, actually. <laughs> All right. So they're saying the developers will now, for the first time, be able to develop a single app that can span from iPhone, iPad, to Mac. And they've been working with a couple of developers, like you say. So maybe... Maybe we'll get some new examples, because the ones we've seen of stocks and news, not exactly like lighting the world on fire. Hmm. Okay, so Asphalt 9 Legends. Do you say asphalt or mm -hmm. asphalt? Asphalt. 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 <laughs> asphalt 9 Legends. Um, yeah, okay, they've got that and they've got a kind of a little chat there saying they love it. And Twitter for Mac. Hmm. Yes! Sorry. <laughs> well, this is, this is just kind of little... Um, Blurb saying now one team can efficiently manage Twitter for iPhone, iPad, and Mac. They used to have, and we this fired just, everyone else. <laughs> yeah. They used to have. They're like, on monitoring of other important stuff. <laughs> Twitter had a Mac app. They stopped developing. So yeah. Like this is actually relatively important because mm. when Twitter's like, ah, we're not going to bother with you. Yeah. That's pretty surprising. Yeah. And if if the Twitter app from iOS, which is obviously very important, can run on, on Mac OS, there you go. All right. Now we got some Aussies on the stage. This is Rob Chatfield from Atlassian. What is, the, what is Atlassian? Uh, so Atlassian does JIRA, which is the often what you use to file an IT ticket if there's a problem. Oh, okay. We use it here. So if your computer balks, then you just file a JIRA ticket. So Atlassian are the guys that created that. Well, this is going to be exciting to watch. Yeah. This file a, a soft spot for Atlassian. They're an Aussie company. Mm -hmm. so. He's thrilled to announce that they have done just that. What was that exactly? Hmm. One code base, one team. Our iOS devs are our Mac devs. But think of the job efficiencies. Well, there aren't a lot of Mac devs. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. So this is huge for Mac OS. Mm -hmm. Right. It just seems like a long way of going around the fact that they cannot be the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you, we argue that like, oh, I wish my iPad ran Mac OS. And, I, and they like seem to have like bridged the gap now. It just, it just, I don't know, it feels kind of yeah. like shoehorned, right? Like, but I suppose if you have the capability to move something seamlessly, like they're their own beasts, so maybe yeah. the ability to kind of have apps and it's like, you know, you can have it. What I'd really love to see is if you had an app for iPhone and then you also had it on Mac and then it would remember your settings in each so you could kind of I feel like across. that's definitely a yeah. thing, right? Like, to your point, Jeff, it seems like it's weird that they're not just combining them at this point or like... Why are they so separate at this point? I think this Why is... Why are they so separate? Because if you're going out of your way to like celebrate the fact that like these are all the same now on every platform. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm skipping a little bit of work there, but like... <laughs> yeah. it, it could be a way to get more powerful Something, apps. something profit. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, we're there. 
Well, we're going there. If we could think of it the other way. Like, imagine there are Mac developers who are like, I don't want to make an iOS device or an iPad version of this. Like, so it's, it's both dump. ways? It should be able to, if it's one app that runs on everything, yeah. So, yeah, right? Right. so it'll run everywhere. Yeah. So if you think about like more powerful programs that probably would have crippled the iPad a while mm. ago, probably could be brought over now with the quality that the iPad Pro is at. Yeah. It'll be and run on that. It'll be interesting to see after the dust settles and this all shakes out, like which platform like kind of loses, not in the way of, um, you know, it not being supported, but like someone's gonna have to take a hit when it comes to like efficiency and like, you know, compression and whatnot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. one of these platforms is gonna be like, oh, I can tell which platform they developed this on first. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's thing. like imagine when you had the old iPhone apps and you'd put them onto your iPad, but it'd just be this size screen right. in the middle like of your I, iPad. I mean, I'm not expecting that kind of yeah. nonsense, but. But it, yeah, if right, it's designed like, for a, a kind of fits everything, then it's is it gonna fit everything perfectly, or is one of them gonna be right. slightly better, slightly worse? Yeah. That's supposed to be something that these these dev kits are supposed to have. Of like, where's this? Object going to be located in this size, that size, that right. size. So like it should be, it should be in the top left on all yeah. of them. Or this one should be centered when it's on a tablet. So, but even like less cosmetically, more and more like you know, I mean, an app on. I guess they could be similar in size too. Mm. You know, but like we're talking like editing video, right? Again, like if you have these big, massive things to move around, that's probably more for a finger than it is yeah. for yeah. a cursor. Yeah. So that also suggests again that a cursor would make a lot more sense on an iPad yeah. Pro. So I, I don't know where. That that would be kind of disheartening to get. Oh, this is just like like kind of like Android tablets. You're like, this is not. This is a phone app. This is yeah. a bad app. Yeah. Um, hopefully it'll work. No, but I mean on paper it sounds pretty cool. They're offering Reality Kit now. Yeah. So this is a Reality Composer. So it's a pre-built AR like um, content, and you can kind of create apps in this. Yeah. All right. It kind of reminds me of 3D Movie Maker. Does anyone remember that? Uh, I remember that. Yeah. You can put, like, oh, so so this composer is like, I want to, oh, I want to put bananas in this. And yeah. It'll put bananas in it. Oh, this is very cool. Let's see what we got so far. This is very cool. So people occlusion. <laughs> okay. Which means that you can put AR content in front and behind someone. So they can imagine you've got little AR objects right. in this, this field, can they can kind of walk around them. That's pretty cool. And they can take motion capture from a human and feed it into the AR experience. So that's pretty amazing. All right, and now we're up to Minecraft. This is gonna be where all AR demos inevitably yeah. end up yeah. in Minecraft. I like this this AR Kit three. This seems like it's gonna have some fun apps coming out of yeah. this. Yeah. I like the idea. I mean, when you when you imagine the kind of we've seen AR on a table. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw the game last year, the Slingshot game that Scott and Vanessa played. Um, but having the ability to kind of walk around AR objects that it's not this separate plane. It's it's pretty cool. Minecraft. This is Minecraft just like finding its way somehow. Don't worry. It's <laughs> if you didn't think we were going to put Minecraft in this presentation. Minecraft's really important. Dan, uh, Dan Ackerman uh, at the event mentions, hey, uh, Apple AR Kit plus Minecraft is really an Apple Microsoft collaboration, right? It's like, yeah, it is. It's still weird to think about. That, but, I mean, Microsoft has made a huge amount of steps to become more and more of a software company than I've ever seen them yeah. do. Like, but... But right. they are still very much a part of Minecraft, right? Yeah, they, they own it. They own it. All right, so we've got Minecraft Earth now. We've got a big table set up on the stage, and they're playing a game of mine. They're, they're playing a Minecraft um, <laughs> on the tabletop. This is amazing. That's bananas. So that's Look very that. cool. And we can... Okay. I, I, they do, this demo's been done now for like six years, right? Right. Seven years. So what's new and what we're seeing, I guess? I don't know. I just think it's cool that, it's cool when I see it and I'm like, oh, that, that's wild. And then what I, if I told never, you, I only see them at demos. What <laughs> if I told you that they prepared this demo in eight minutes? Because the kit is so good. They're taking, I, yeah, it sure, off okay. the sta they're taking it off the tabletop and moving it onto the stage. Okay, that's interesting. Well, that's, well, that's a very cool graphic, so I've rebuilt. 
Okay, so now they've kind of moved it off the table and it's all happening on the stage. It's very, it they're inside the computer. They are inside the mind craft. <laughs> That's very cool. I guess. I mean, <laughs> if you play Minecraft, I'm sure you're loving this. Yeah. Do you play Minecraft? No. That's a no. That's, you there? Uh, I've played it. I, I'm not a huge Minecraft I've never fan, seen someone. But... She's just, she's losing it. Lydia from Mojang is just like, ah, ah, I'm in Minecraft. This is the last person. It's, it's, so it's so much fun to watch them pull the camera back and you're just seeing her standing at the desk. Uh, like yeah. And she's just so excited, but she's just standing where she is. She's just standing holding her phone over the stage and yeah. she's got some slightly janky graphics around her legs. So she's... It's so cool, apparently. It's like hide and seek. I mean, is it like hide and seek? It's sort of... I mean, it's impressive. The, you ha I haven't Am seen I dead this... inside? Because this isn't totally impressive to well, me. Well, no, the, the, they're demonstrating the, the, that human... The um, people occlusion. Yes. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So you can play hide and seek in VR. <laughs> or AR. So you can, otherwise, you can just do this. <laughs> people like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where is it? I said, it's neat. And now they're chickens, I think, are coming. I don't know. This, this, this might look like one of the dorkiest... Uh, demos I've seen. This is almost cringy. Yeah. It's, like, it's tough. It's you've tough got, to pull this You've got off. some really keen people that are very excited about their product, but then... It's like watching somebody else's kids recital. You're like, yeah, I, I know I know you love this, this thing, but, you know, maybe Little Billy's not the best. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's, it's also when you've got two very earnest people that are like... This is amazing. And they're both kind of awkwardly squatting with their phones. Yes, so maybe the, that's... The, the posturing is so bizarre. It's, it's almost one of those things of, do you want to look like this when you're playing this game? Yeah. You know, just be aware of this. It's kind of like what, um, VR mouth, I call it. And people put on VR glasses and I was like, huh? Oh. <laughs> and like, anytime anyone takes a picture, you're like, close your mouth. You look like a gaping... She's so happy. They're very this happy is... about Minecraft. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. I can see for kids, this is really awesome. And I think about when I was playing Commander Keen, and it looked like this actually because they didn't have better graphics. It was all uh, blocky and pixely. It's to be able to actually step inside that is kind of fun for kids, right? Yeah. I think it's cool. no longer just on tabletop. They're gonna. Just, you guys have kids? They're, yeah, yeah, I mean... I'm just thinking, my kid's going like, to run into a wall because he's not paying attention. Because he's yeah. like, I'm in the game! It's I'm like, no, you're in the apartment. My, yeah, <laughs> you're in the apartment. You're looking through Yell your screen. Yelling at your mom's bars. Yeah, like, and there's yeah. the fireplace. And now you're in the fireplace. It's like, get out of the fireplace. This didn't track right at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. We didn't spatially map the room, son. <laughs> oh, gosh, I didn't pre-map. <laughs> oh, my god. Okay, gosh. so the move from AR kit to reality kit... So maybe taking us off kind of tabletops and into more of a open space? Perhaps. We're going to see how this, this entire thing works because it's, it's, again, we have the Mac Pro High, so. Yeah. This is yeah. all chasers. Like. <laughs> Man, that. We're at the pickleback section of the show. <laughs> $10,000. All right. So we're talking about Swift and they've had 450,000 apps developed by, via Swift. Yeah, it did feel like we had a bit of a peak there with the Mac Pro. And I just, it's funny. Do you remember when we were excited about dark mode? No. I when was that today? <laughs> that was, uh, I think, I mean, time means nothing anymore. This show has been going on for more than two hours. And it's, <laughs> it's true. And it has it's been. just, uh, yep. Coming how, up. how dare you? Close to, I've been awake for 12 hours, so, guys, so we're if, going great. If you're in the New York area, just stop by. Just come yeah, on over. Come you, don't, on over. <laughs> you don't even have to use a hashtag. Just come on up. Yeah. 10th floor. Right yeah. up. Drinks. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is still going. All right. So we've got one. Let's do a quick recap of what we've yeah, seen. Yeah, I think like that's a good idea. Cool stuff. So we've seen my notes somewhere over here. We got uh, a new iPad OS. Which, what do you guys make of the idea of actually dumping, not dumping, but not using iOS to label this device anymore? Because yeah. iPad was using iOS for the longest time. 
I think Scott wrote a question of like, is this going to be iPad OS one? Like, or does it continue the numbering mm. system? Oh, that's and it. That's so a good question. Why why make this distinction at this point? Well, do you think it's because they're such separate devices now? It felt like before the iPhone and iPad were just kind of small form factor, larger form factor. Right. Whereas now the iPhone is this kind of facial recognition. It's FaceTime. It's all these kind of interactive elements in that respect it's kind of an extension of communication whereas the ipad is like an extension of creativity mm -hmm. and efficiency so it's maybe moving that more into a creative enterprise space whereas the iphone is that real you know what i mean when i say an extension of you like it's a kind of a it's it's this device that you don't have to think about typing on the screen anymore. It's just kind of you're using your face. It's all just mm. kind of seamless. Mm -hmm. Whereas the iPad is no longer just the larger version of that. I'm also curious um, if iPad OS is just the pro. Is that all the iPads? I don't know. Right? Because mm. I want to say. Actually, I think that... he said we're, we're renaming it iPad OS. So that okay. would mean all of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is, it's also strange because if you're coming up with this project catalyst where an app can run on now three platforms instead of what used to be two, if they're all going to work together anyway, why now break it out as well? Yeah. Like, it's one app that runs on all three. There's a lot. Yeah. There's just, a lot to unpack. Just, I think it's mildly confusing. I don't know if it means that iPad is going to veer off slightly when it comes to gestures and different forms of working with it because mm. a, lot of these, a lot of these things don't translate perfectly well from an iPhone 10 to mm. an iPad at this point because... They used to have a lot of similarities, but then you're like, why am I pulling from a right corner on an iPad versus the right corner on an iPhone XR? Like, it makes yeah. it more, way more sense on a, on a 10 yeah. than it does on an iPad. So maybe they're, they're seeing something that, that the iPad's going to veer off such a different direction because it definitely is getting much more like yeah. a computer. Even the cheap one can use the pencil. Every, every iPad can use the pencil at this point. So, yeah, maybe it's a yeah. creative... This is the mind-blowing thing. Yeah, it's your yeah. creative side on this one. Yeah. So we saw that. We're also, just to update you guys on what's happening, we're going through Swift UI, so it's just talking about uh, the Swift coding language mm -hmm. and just how awesome it is. So I, I feel like, awesome. I mean, go Swift, go Team uh, Swift. Safari is going to be classified as a desktop browser on iPad from now on, so you don't, when you bring up a page, you'll actually get the full-on website, mm. which is interesting. Yeah. 30 keyboard shortcuts. Again, no mention of a key about the cursor at all. I'm sure people are going to be trying that out yeah. the second they get it. Uh, then, of course, the, the highlights, the Mac Pro, right? It yeah. starts, the old one started at $3,000. That's the one from 2013. Uh, the trash can design completely kind of put in the dustbin. Oh, uh, I didn't want to say that, but it you was said it. I said it. I'm, I'm sorry. You have to own that now. Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so the, the biggest thing about the Mac Pro, other than the size of it, it looks a lot, it kind of looks like the older one. It's got the cheese grater design. Yeah. It's got just massive feet. And a wheel it's a option. Beast, man. I want to know what the wheels cost. I'm gonna make sure I read this right. Five thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars to start with. In the fall, this is coming out. There's also a display for five thousand dollars, which does not include a stand. The stand is. Well, I was edition. adding wrong. It's eleven k. Yeah, six plus six, so it's twelve. No, six and five. Well, five thousand for this for the. For the actual display. Oh, and then the grand 1, for the yeah, of course you got. Who could forget about the thousand dollar stand? Very important. So, and the little rotator dealy, which is like five hundred dollars or something. Yeah, 400? That, I think that was the Visa mount thing. That yeah, was a separate item. Yeah. So there's even more. So they definitely look like they're going after pros with this. They showed yeah. off a crazy demo with tons of music, tons of uh, different tracks, and it played seamlessly. At least that's what it looked like there. 8K video and rendering. No rendering. It was actually happening right there with color correction on 8K footage, which is... It was wild. Is, again, is absurd. It's very difficult to do that on any machine. It looked great. Mm. The price is huge. Do you think this is going to make uh, people have an easier time with a higher-priced MacBook Pro in the future, things like that? Because if you see this thing, you're like, that's $6,000. <laughs> oh, this is only... fine by this, comparison. Right. Like, yeah. is this a new anchor pricing kind of concept? You know, there, it's for different uh, applications. Mm. If you have a MacBook Pro, I mean, that's not really, you're not at that level where you would need or like consider one and not the other. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, uh, it's a great field device, but I mean, that, Pro, that Pro is a production studio. I think it's massive. I need to find out more about the Mac Pro. So far, I don't believe the Apple Store has been updated, 
when it comes to the, the no, Apple products. Yet. I've been refreshing because I, I want to buy two of those products. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think about the, um, the kind of multi-window features, the kind of multitasking capability on, I think it's, it's now iPad OS. So like with the pencil and stuff, that makes your iPad a much more useful device, it feels. Yeah, I'm going to be real curious to kind of wrap my head around that new workflow. Just yeah. Just because... It changes a lot of stuff in the but way. But it makes the iPad a lot more convenient. Like plug a USB in, you know, zip yeah. files, zoip around. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I think it'll be like a a cool sort of you know learning experience. But at the same time, I worry that I might be left with like a couple things falling short. Where I'm yeah. just like, why didn't we just go all the way yeah, across right. the finish line? Why didn't we just get trackpad support? Yeah, or just, you know, I don't know. I could see I could see myself getting kind of frustrated with where that goes. But, mm. you know, it's definitely made substantial strides. So yeah. We'll see. Yeah. And this, the amount of, I still think it's weird. Like, just give us Windows. Yeah. I, I like, the, the, one of the reasons why I go to Mac OS, like, oh, I can actually resize the window. How do you do it? I drag this corner and I move it. And maybe this is me being a complete old man. I don't, I'm going to slide this thing over and then, okay, I'm to resize it this way. It's yeah. like, why? Why do I have to do that? Because yeah. there are other ways to manipulate, especially when you can touch the whole screen. Why yeah. can't I, I could pinch it and move this thing? So I think it's, it's good for productivity. And that's what the iPad Pro is supposed to be. And it is, we're really entering a bizarre time with the amount of power with the iPad Pro yeah. and how Mac OS is. So at this point, it's like Mac doesn't have a ton of attention when it comes yeah. to, to development. So where are we going to go with that? Yeah. Um, Tim Cook's back on stage and said, what an amazing morning, guys. He didn't say it like that. But he's, um, so the, de the developer platform yeah. is going to be available in beta today. And for the public, Mac OS, iOS, and iPad OS is available in July. And the software available in the fall. All right. And of course... Back to talking about the Mac Pro, which has returned to the screen, oh. which was available July, we said. So that is, that was fall. July. Oh, fall. Fall, yeah. 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 You'll also be able to get an early look at it. Okay, I guess they're going to have yeah, the Mac Yeah, so they're going to have it in the Pro Studio across the road from the um, actual convention center. So it looks like we're wrapping up. It looks like he's saying we've got a huge week ahead, many more robot exploding heads. <laughs> I don't know if I mean, that's a promise. Now, do you think they delivered on that exploding robot? Um, I mean, my head hurts. Yeah. yeah. How does that... Am I, I, am I the robot? Maybe. <laughs> um, I, right, I, I don't know if we're going to get a one more thing. I don't know if we're getting trackpad support, guys. Oh, that'd be so crazy one if you just snuck that right in there. Well, it's very important that we enjoyed our annual dub dub, mm. as it's mm. now called. <laughs> Mm. Um, Guys, that was mind blowing. Mm. Oh, robot mind blowing. <laughs> he's still go Tim yes. to talk about families and stuff like that, and now he's clapping for everybody. Well, so, we, yeah. having people clap for themselves or something. Yeah. I mean, it's a rich, it's a rich clapping circle. So everyone's happy. Happy. That's how and we're going to end this. Hopefully, would you please get off the stage, Tim? All it's right. been seven years we've been doing this. Have a great right, week. Peace sign. Okay, excellent job. Namaste. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to get out of here. Tim Cook is done. He's out. And oh. the whole crowd is getting up and leaving. And the journos are all like, got to get across the road and find stuff. So there's no. So are we going to talk to someone or are we going to try to at some point? Uh, a little I, later. We might try to get in contact okay. with you know, no, a no, person no living pressure. or dead. You know? Yeah, no pressure. I don't uh, want to have to do any of yeah, that. Yeah, I no, think it's... I don't, it's I, that's not going to happen. Okay, today, fine. Probably. All right, so let's, let's, let's talk. We already recap most of it. Let's yeah, talk a little did. bit about um, the new maps. Now, they, they actually... <laughs> I was like recapping all the cool <laughs> stuff, and then he's like, hey, remember they did remember, the whole maps? Remember maps? I mean, this is part of the iOS part. The yeah. thing is, the iOS part wasn't exactly the huge thing about no, this No, it wasn't. At all. It felt no. like iOS played second fiddle to iPad OS, Mac OS, yeah. and the It was Pro. just the stuff that leaked. Like, yeah. that was it. Yeah. I mean, the so Pro didn't leak. But also, that's the stuff people are going to use, right? You, sure. You and me, tomorrow, we're going to be making new tongue-piercing emojis. Mm -hmm. uh, we're Perhaps. going to be... <laughs> you know, Don't right. you have your tongue pierced, Jeff? I thought no, you were pretty alternative. That, let that one go. Yeah, I think that was, that was best for everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Those kind of features are the things that people will be talking about tomorrow, like you and me on the street. But yeah. then, and there's the halo effect of the Mac Pro, right? There's the 
look at this beautiful device, look at this amazing thing. They've finally kind of come back into that pro space again after sort of sleeping on the watch a bit. But I don't know. It's like, For me, it was the iPad and Mac stuff that was a bit more exciting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the great thing is we sort of knew a lot of it in advance. I mean, my play of the day, wheels. Oh, you're all about the pro wheels? Yeah, wheels. They're coming back around. They're doing a 360. <laughs> I can't wait to see people lugging those things around. Like, oh, it comes with me. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. You know, somebody's going to bring a Starbucks. It's going to happen. Somebody said, land party? I got my, I got my. It's, it's I cool. mean, they didn't say how much that pro tower weighs. I really want to know about that. Because I mean, the last one was 50 pounds. That thing is, looked like steel. What is that in proper metric it, normal human measurements? Me that's that about out. like what? It's about half. Kilos. 20 that's I a don't lot know. Of, is it? I'm checking. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. You can't uh, bench that stuff. 22.67. Whoa. There you go. That's. It was heavy. That's a lot of. It's a lot. Because it's a lot of machine. Yeah. Like, it was a it was a great, very powerful machine when I had it. Like. But this isn't the trash can. We're talking the original cheese. Grater. The trash can weighed 8,000 pounds. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, tra- uh, but I remember the ones you're talking about. Yeah, the towers. Yeah. That thing was, the towers. was a beast. beast. But I suppose a PC is heavy, right? You know, it's big. It's not designed to be portable. Well, That's why you was, have this thing. This thing had a, a metal. This, everything was like aluminum. Yeah. And steel. I yeah. mean, this I, thing was chunky. So. Yeah. You can build a pretty decent PC under 10 pounds. I mean, under f- four kilos. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was briefly thinking that you were talking about the cost 10 pounds. I was right. like, oh, that's a good deal. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah right, right, not that's bad. amazing. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's, um, it's not for us. We are, no, not, we are not the people. We have to avert our gaze Look, when the Mac Pro comes I out. hope we get one here. Maybe yeah. we will, like, you know, to, for, for some of our serious, you know, production stuff. That'd be great. We'll but, definitely be testing it, so. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like I said, that is 100% not a consumer product. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone realistically would watch that and be like, well, I can't afford that. That's mm. great. You know, no, that's not, it's not for you. But without the Mac Pro today, would today have been a squib for you? Um, I think the Pro is a very kind of almost emotional sort of thing where it's like, oh, this thing, like you said, has been out of the picture for so many years. Yeah. It coming back, uh, not leaking out. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I think that was a really cool surprise. Yeah. Uh, the other software stuff, yeah. I mean, some of it felt like a lot of catch up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think depending on how you look at these events... Uh, through what kind of lens you're looking at it, a lot of the stuff sometimes feels like catch up. Yeah, so. but it's hard because I think a lot of people in the Apple world, for people that are so baked in with this ecosystem and really use the products every single day, as an example, sometimes when these features are launched, I'll get a, a TV studio or a radio station call me up and they're like, Claire, can you come on and talk about this new dark mode that's yeah. been launched? And I'll be like, oh, hey, hun, this has been around for a while. Yeah. So it's... I suppose that's less the case now because it's sort of when Android was less popular or less kind of in the consumer sphere, maybe that would have happened more. But there's a bit of catch up. I mean, I think the the map stuff, I think, you know, not as exciting. That's that stuff we're seeing in Google Maps. And yeah. the Windows features, like as in the ability to multitask mm-hmm. and have multiple windows, really cool. Similar to what you get on a Windows tablet. But I've just got to say, like, I just haven't found a Windows or Android tablet that is as slick as the iPad. Me neither. The iPad is just a beautiful one. piece of it's, hardware. It, there's not one. They, the they surface, do the tablets better. The Surface is sort of coming up a bit, so maybe yeah. this is a way of recognizing that the Surface is the first kind of non-iPad tablet to really make an sure. inroad. Not that you'd call it necessarily a tablet, but, you know, I think maybe they've kind of got an eye on that market and saying, all right, we need to. We can't just rest on our laurels anymore. I think, um, you know, we, we kind of gloss over it, but the fact that they are carving this out in its own OS um, really will likely mark, you know, a sort of milestone in, in the, you know, the, the lifeline of the iPad, mm. right? So it seems like that it feels like a more important kind of moment for where the iPad's future yeah. goes um, than just an incremental kind of software update. Yeah. And, you know, and the fact that there does seem to be a very deliberate effort to not merge the two mm-hmm. A little bit with the software catalyst stuff, but not in terms of like their day-to-day kind of functionality. Mm. So that's interesting. I mean, I, I, to me, the more interesting thing when these events happen is the story that's being told yeah. by, by the products and and where you know the company sees the future of their stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it's great that there's you know 30 keyboard gestures and whatever the hell, but to see like how Apple envisions its 
roadmap for yeah. the stuff they make to me is the more interesting and it's angle. they've used like they've had four million hours on the road to test that roadmap out and now you can zoom into it so that's it it's the future of brought it back there and they're gonna call i mean like if only one someone, someone had done that already but they didn't yeah so but thank right. you apple you have to you have to kind of look at this and you have to step back and just kind of go all right, what does this mean? And you're right, if we look at, they haven't completely merged into yeah. this kind of single marzipan that we all maybe thought was coming. And Craig Federighi last year said um, that iOS, macOS won't merge. She said that at WWDC, sorry, dub dub, yeah, dub dub 18. <laughs> dub 18, oh, we were just kids back then. I just love that I, I made it all the way here thinking that dub dub was a reference to music or just the robots. No, it's, it's fine, you know, it's, look. It's day one. You've already learned a lot. There's yeah. actually more to the recap. I'm looking up, uh, looking at our live blog. Well, and the privacy stuff too. That privacy was a big sign deal. in with Apple. Yeah. That, yeah. that idea it seems really interesting. Uh, if, if you guys know about that, you know, signing with Facebook and signing with Google. If you sign in with Apple the, with their little button, you'll get like all kinds of ways to not get tracked, which sounds mm. really great. I love the idea that it will quickly give you a temporary email address. Or yeah. but consider this, right? I'm down. Most people have Gmail. So, like, it is wild that this, like, intersection of where people, you know, like, everyone loves Maps. Everyone loves Gmail. Everyone doesn't necessarily get on board with Apple Maps. And but can you see that this kind of privacy feature would set a standard? Because, I mean, the, the idea of... Our, our email is our identity online. It's like how we haven't talked about the fact that, that our your phone cell number. phone numbers, yeah, yeah that's, that's your two-factor, and that's how you verify yourself as a person. And we give these things out willy-nilly to yeah. like our corner cafe or sure. someone who's starting a mailing list. The security around that is so flawed, and yet it's, I mean, I keep a lot of personal information in my Gmail account. Right. You know, the big, the big new era of privacy and security is things like identity theft. So could we see that kind of, I guess, like, would you call it a hashed email, that ability to kind of auto-generate a fake email address, something that Gmail picks up? Because I'd love to see that. Maybe, if these guys are setting an agenda with this kind of announcement. Maybe, but again, you have to look at like where and how Google makes money and the, the, the things they sell and the products they Touché. are, you know, uh, that are responsible for them creating revenue. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, like I said, like they definitely made some some substantial strides in the in the way of privacy when you were out there at, at IO and mm -hmm. but I don't think they are anywhere near the level uh, or could attain the level that Apple mm. is just because Apple does not sell the people the way. And, that's, and I don't want to, and they're not selling people, but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They're selling data and they're selling, you know, your sort of digital profile. And we saw so much of that today that they really pushed on that privacy message. And they and should. That is their greatest yeah. strength. I mean, yeah. these One of their greatest strengths. These developers are going to be using that sign-in with Apple on their apps, not just with you know, Facebook and Google. Yeah. Now that we'll have this third option on iOS, which is going to get a lot of people to use that. Yeah, exactly. Which is, which is a really interesting play in general. We also had, very quickly, an Xbox and PlayStation 4 controller that was a crazy support tease, on Apple yeah. TV, which was like... That was Apple TV, or was that... I believe it was Apple TV. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was uh, the iPad OS. No, I'm not. I have to double check that. Okay, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we got Watch OS, your favorite one, up until the Mac Pro, I think. Voice recorder on your watch yeah. is coming. It's going to have its, the watch. its own yes, app store. You don't have to have a dedicated app on your phone that matches with your, with your watch anymore. Activity trends, it'll check your progress over the last 90 days. Uh, Which is great, taking a more holistic, long term view. And there's also a streaming audio API. So they, yeah. they showed uh, listening to a baseball game from your wrist, which is actually pretty cool, I think. Um, did I say the decibel meter thing already? No, you Maybe. haven't said that. Yeah, that was so really cool. It'll tell you when it's too loud, essentially. And this is a real problem. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not kidding. So, yeah, but it's not the New York feature. It's not. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that Apple, it was Apple TV for Xbox and okay. PS4 support. So And some um, information about mm -hmm. Apple Arcade is coming still. They didn't tell us. Yeah, they just kind of mentioned that. We saw a trailer thing. for a new show called For All Mankind. Okay. So that's, okay, that's like a lot of stuff. Yeah. We have, yes. We're going to have everything at CNET.com, by the way. So if you're wondering, what happened? It's, we have <laughs> everything. I guarantee we've had everything. And we're going to uh, be messing around with a lot of products Pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. We're going to have tons of videos about Let's this. Let's so. lift the wheelie box. I, I, I want to see videos of people trying to pick that thing up. Give me so my that. wheelie box and let me lift it. Can I I'm skate on the record it? saying that. Can I skate that pro? People yeah. will try it. It's going to be the first couple of videos on YouTube on that. Fair enough. Favorite announcement? 
Um, I, I think the pro. I, give me the pro. I want one. Mm. I think that was probably the most dazzling announcement. I think we saw a lot of really cool things that everyday people will get benefits out of, things like watchOS, um, things like fun features for the iPhone. Um, dark mode was without a doubt what people tweeting at me were most excited about. But I think for pure show-stopping, even if it's in the middle of the show, Mac Pro. Show stop right in the middle of the yeah. show. <laughs> what Mac about Pro, you? favorite announcement, but I'm really intrigued with, with iPad OS, where okay. that's going to go, because I'm yeah. very curious. Widgets on the home screen. It's like, you're, you're making a computer. No, it, like I said, like I'm it's... excited this... about computers, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I like computers. For sure. USB support for iPad. I'm going to throw in a little other mention for that, because I love that. I think that's going to do it for us, guys. All right, good, because it's been so long, we should go to bed now. Thank you for joining <laughs> us today. If you still got questions about Apple's event, you should let us know on Twitter. You can... Uh, I don't know how you could have questions, but go, go on Twitter, ask us. Use the hashtag Stay Not Live or just tweet us directly. You want to give out your handle? Yeah, at Riley Styley. Um, I had someone say that dark mode was the Vegemite of iOS, and I'm on board for those kind of Australian takes, so keep them coming. What is that? It's just like pedestrian? Vegemite? I know what Vegemite is. Oh. But like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It means like it's just the pedestrian. No, 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 it's just like dark. Dark oh, and delicious. <laughs> Okay. I just that, can't emphasize enough. Me, uh, if you've got yeah. questions about that, just tweet Claire. Yeah. I'm at Ayaz on Twitter. If you're watching us on YouTube, you'll, you should follow us. But if you want to like find out when we have new videos, we have new videos every day. You don't have to hit the bell. You don't really even have to do that. Check everything uh, at CNET.com. Also, if you want to keep up with everything at Apple, check out the Apple Core. It's a great show. So long from New York. We got to get out of here.